Jeep, and by Thornapple Valley's great tasting hot dogs, hams, bacon, and sausage. And by Michigan National Corporation Banks, where we give you more money for your money. And by the Detroit area J.C. Petty stores, your headquarters for kangaroo shoes. And by your 47 greater Detroit area Midas shops, trust the Midas touch. And by Budweiser, the king of beers, and proud sponsor of the U.S. Olympic team. For all you do, this Bud's for you. And by Little Caesars, home of the famous Pizza Pizza and Panza Pizza. One of the Little Caesars 150 Detroit area locations is near you. Now, here's Bruce and Sid. From the Forum here in Inglewood, California, again we talk to you from the home of the Los Angeles Kings. Hi everybody, Bruce Martin and Sid Abel back with you and in a moment or two the Detroit Red Wings who have cinched a playoff berth, hoping that they could reach second place in the National Hockey League standings will be swinging into action. Sid, we've talked so many times about a team that is out of the playoff contention, the Los Angeles Kings are being usually a freewheeling sort of a hockey club and sometimes tough to handle. Well, they'll be freewheeling. There's no doubt about that. They'll be playing for next year's contracts. They're a club that's not going anywhere, Bruce. And they're a club that the Wings have not played well against here in this building. Detroit have not won a hockey game in this building since way back in February 1978. This Wing club is a different club, though. They check well. They try and hang in games, and if they continue to play the way they have on this road trip, I would think they have a very good shot at breaking that record and taking home another win. Talk a little bit about the standings, uh, Sid, in the Norris division, where the Minnesota North Stars have things pretty well cinched. The Red Wings are two points behind the St. Louis Blues, but believe it or not, St. Louis right into Edmonton tonight, and in the second period, leading the Edmonton Oilers by a score of 6-1. to one. The Red Wings, uh, as we say, those two points behind, but they need a victory here. Chicago Blackhawks, incidentally, are trailing the Toronto Maple Leafs in that game. The last report we had was 6-3 to in all nine goals in the first period and none in the second. So things are not working out too well for the Red Wings in Edmonton, but they are in Toronto if things keep going the way they are going. Mike Illich is here watching this hockey game. Uh, <laughs> you can barely see him as... Mike and wife Marion uh, traveled with the team and have uh, been to all three of the games here on the coast. And they have been a very happy couple, I'll tell you, particularly after the game in Calgary when the Red Wings, for the first time since 1977-78, cinched a playoff berth. Oh, he was really excited. Uh, of course, so was Marion, but uh, just to make the road trip. And they were in Calgary for the first time. They enjoyed that. And I understand they went up to Banff. Uh, great people and uh, a lot of fun to travel with. Well, that's the story prior to the start of this game between the Red Wings and the Los Angeles Kings. We'll be back with the opening face-off in a moment. You know you'll get the job done right. We take pride in what we do. Because we care about the work we do for you. Trust the Midas Touch. 78 MGB. Trust the Midas Touch. There are 47 Midas Muffler shops in the greater Detroit area. Check the white pages for the shop nearest you. This is European design from an affordable point of view. The amazing Renault Encore with distinctive European styling. Functional yet expressive. A panoramic rear glass door that reveals flexible interior space. Most amazing of all, it's only $57.55. Affordable European design built in America. Renault Encore, amazing. The one to watch, the one to watch, the one to watch. Renault. And so, hi again from here in Inglewood, the Forum, Jack Kent Cook called it his fabulous Forum as he brought the Detroit Red Wings in. I'll tell you, we have on television a sign, looks like we made it, Red Wings, as they welcome our telecast and radio broadcast. And uh, Sid Abel looks like a phone book over here to our left. He must have had 400 people come up, all from Detroit, uh, who some are transplanted into the uh, West Coast here and some just visiting. Another big sign, Go Wings. I think we may hear more noise for Detroit than we do for Los Angeles you know, in this hockey game people, here tonight. Bruce, people driving in from Sacramento and Aiden. from San Diego, they're, they're from all over uh, that follow the wings and here to see this game. Now, prior to the start of the game, the national anthem. Oh, say. 
is his name, who sings the national anthem here before the start of the game between the Detroit Red Wings and the Los Angeles King. The referee for the hockey game is Bob Myers. His two linesmen, Ryan Bozak and Wayne Forsey. And the goaltenders for the hockey game tonight, Greg Steffen, who will be getting the omen share of work here on in with his 18 wins and 20 losses and a couple of ties. But he put up two great performances in the games against uh, Vancouver on Tuesday and Thursday night uh, against Calgary. Marcus Matson. Overall record is 6-7-2 and two and a 4.16 goals against average. And he'll be in the nets now for the Los Angeles Kings as this hockey game is about to get underway. The Los Angeles club have lost their last three in a row. They've been eliminated from any playoff contention. Detroit is going to open the hockey gate with Dwight Foster at center ice. Danny Gare and Bob Mano on the wings. And they make mention now that... Marcel Dion is playing the 1,000th game in his National Hockey League career. What a select group he joins, Bruce. Uh, five players this year surpassed the 1,000th mark, including Brad Park of the Red Wings, but there have only been 53 in the history of the National League ever play a 1,000 or more games, and now Marcel Dion joins that group. And he's what getting a he has been. standing ovation from the crowd here. We're about to get the hockey game underway. Bob Myers, the referee, shakes hands with Marcel and gave him the puck that was going to be used to start this game. So they go get another one. Dwight Foster in against Dion. Dion has Simmer on one wing and Taylor over on the other side, and the hockey game is underway. From the opening faceoff, the wings swing it into the Los Angeles zone. In behind his own goal is Mark Chorney. Chorney back along the defense for Los Angeles, starts out up the left side. His pass skipped away, comes all the way back into the Detroit zone. There will be no icing. Stefan played it in behind his own net to Bob Mano. He's pinned in along the boards right there. They got the puck loose off to the side of the goal, hit the side of the net with it. Mano, a bouncing puck, played it into the corner, and Dwight Foster goes in after it. Now Foster clears it ahead to Bob Mano. It skipped in behind him. Chorney took a whack at it, sent it back to the Detroit line, and Greg Smith played it back out center ice. Now here's Dwight Foster. Foster laid the pass over on the left wing to Mano, and Mano scoops it in behind the Los Angeles goal. Cleared up the left side now for Marcel Dion. He just let it come back into the Detroit end, and Brad Park will come back after it. One minute into the first period, no score here in Los Angeles. The play back into the King zone. Jay Wells, wearing number 24 for Los Angeles, played it into the corner. Kelly Kissio left it there. Then fired it out in front. That's cleared off to the side of the net. Still low with it is Lane Lambert. Lambert centering pass, and Kissio checked at the last second. Moving in on him was Hackinson. And the puck comes out to center eight. Reed Larson. Larson clearing it ahead. Now it's Kissio back over the Los Angeles line. Kissio trying to get through, and Chorney tipped it away into the corner. And it comes out center ice with Reed Larson back after it. Larson fired it offside into the Los Angeles end. Well, you know, this Los Angeles Cup club are dangerous just because of the players that can score goals. They have Bernie, McMickle, Bernie Nichols with 40 goals. Simmers has scored 40 goals. Of course, Dion with 35. Fox with 27. Five players with more than 60 points in their scoring. 
uh, make, would make any club dangerous. It's surprising, though, the fact that they have been eliminated from the playoffs for the second straight year. Nichols comes on now. No, he started to, and then when the Red Wings came back with their line of Eisenman, Dugay, and Boulder of a checking unit led by Roskowski comes out now. He's got Kelly on the one wing, and over on the other side is Hawkinson now. Wings carry into the Los Angeles zone. Buck dumped in behind the Kings goal. Los Angeles in control there, nearing the two-minute mark of the first period with no score. Out at center ice, Hawkinson. Hawkinson over the line into the Detroit zone. Hawkinson went around. Larson put the puck right out in front. And it deflects into the corner. Kelly goes in after it for the Kings. Latticer tipped it away from him. And Eisenman in behind his own goal. Knocks down a bouncing puck and then swings it to the line, but again not out. It does come out center ice now. Fired right back in, and Stefan steers it off to Boulderan. Ivan Boulderev in behind his own goal. Played it up the left side. Latticer had trouble with it. Gets it out center ice now. Eisenman tipped it ahead. Dugay sent it back to him, and then it's cleared back into the Detroit zone. Back after it, Randy Latticer in behind his own goal. Latticer had it knocked away by Hawkinson. Into the corner, Reed Larson. Larson finally drives it down the ice. It went off a Los Angeles player, so there's no icing. And the Kings will go back after it. Brian Engblom feeds it up the right side. It comes out center ice to Fox. He was checked, and Pierre Aubrey, who wears number 27 for the Red Wings, cleared it again to center ice. Nichols has it there. Got it back into the Detroit end. John Barrett goes in after it. Barrett played it into the corner, going in after it now. Here is Dunlop of Detroit. Blake Dunlop coming out center ice. A high pass. Aubrey knocks it down, cleared it back to the zone. Dunlop was in too quickly, so Aubrey holds it out, waits for him to come back on side, then drives a long shot, and Matson has no trouble with that. Colin Campbell holds it in. Now the puck tipped away again by Aubrey. Goes into the corner. Aubrey laid it along the glass. A bouncing puck. The rookie McClellan went after it. He's tied up along the boards. They struggle there. And coming out with it is Jim Fox going in behind his own goal for Los Angeles. We've played three and a half minutes of the first period. No scores. The play comes all the way back into the Detroit zone. A race for it. And John Barrett gets there first. Just beats Enblom. Takes it in behind his own net. Played it up the right side, and Eddie Johnstone tips it the rest of the way to center ice. We've got the two Barretts out there now. Fred Barrett, who came out of retirement, John's brother, back along the defense for Los Angeles. Now the play in behind the Detroit goal. Colin Campbell sends it up the left side. Aubrey ahead now to Gare. Here is Danny Gare driving a long shot, deflected into the corner by Matson. Zimmer went in after it. Ahead to Dion. Marcel Dion sent it to the Detroit blue line. Greg Smith tips it away there, and Brad Park has it. Park turning back in the Detroit end. Played it ahead for Danny Gare. Tipped off his stick. Hardy shot it in behind the Detroit goal. And in after it now is Park. Brad Park clearing it up the right side. And here bringing it out now is Foster. Ahead to Gare. Danny Gare rolls it off to the side of the Los Angeles goal. Mark Hardy didn't get it out. Tied up by Mano. Dwight Foster pinned in along the board. Pulled away. Here's Foster. Put it right through the goal mouth. And Danny Gare couldn't get loose. Now the play held in by Park, right out in front. Foster has the puck right there, and they bang away at it, and down on top of the puck for the moment was the goaltender, Matson, with Dwight Foster right in on top of him. And Dwight Foster made a pretty good play on that. He had his back turned to the net, and as the puck come out across, he just tried to put it back through his feet. No score. We pause for this message. There's a smile in every bite. Of every thorn, apple valley, hot dog. Funny how things go so right. With every thorn, apple valley, hot dog bite. Well, heat them up, serve them up, eat them up. Watch them do their, watch them do their stuff. There's a smile in every bite. Of every thorn, apple valley, hot dog. There's a smile in every, of every, there's a great thing. Face-off will take place to the left side of the Los Angeles goal. No score. 4.35 has been played. Now the puck knocked away from Park. Coming out with it down the ice. Moving in on the Detroit goal is Steve Kristoff, but he was tied up. Failed to work away from Greg Smith and the wings. Danny Gare sends it ahead now to Mano. Mano took a bump along the boards from Kelly. Now Kelly cleared it into the Detroit zone. Danny Gare gets into it. They do some shoving in along the boards. And the play has been whistled down, and now we've got everybody getting into it. Greg Smith, number five of the Red Wings. They're really damming away at somebody, Bob Mano. 
And they're actually struggling to get loose. Danny Gare took a little swipe at somebody. But it's Greg Smith and yes. Kelly, I believe. Well, Kelly was the one that came in late after Mano got hit into the port. I suppose Kelly is called their policeman. Well, this is good for the Wings, a game that uh, they know they're in the playoffs, but to get into a little fracas like this, I think it'll get everybody realizing that uh, you can get hit and you have to play. So while they separate them, penalties will be called. We'll pause for this message. Well, a roughing calls to Kelly, and it started with Kelly and Bob Mano. He right. was shoving Mano around pretty well. Uh, Bob trying to get the puck away from the boards, and Kelly come up, and, uh, well, he got his glove in his face and, and pushed referee, him back. And referee then, Bob Myers had his back to it, uh, almost of necessity. He was trapped in the middle of it all. So Greg Smith and Kelly get two minutes apiece for roughing at 4.56. Each team will be short a man. Ivan Boulder, Evan Eisenman are the two Detroit forwards now. Latticer and Reed Larson. Marcel Dion comes out with Taylor. They two Los Angeles forwards. Mark Hardy and Jay Wells back along the defense. Buck came back now to Hardy. Hardy clears it to Dion. Larson knocked it away at the line. His pass knocked down center ice. He picks it up a second time, gives it now to Latticer. Here is Randy Latticer. Latticer flips it deep into the Los Angeles zone. Eisenman digging in after it. Marcus Matson came out of the net to tip it away from him. Dion played it in behind his own goal. Hardy has it there. Mark Hardy head now to Dion. Here's Dion coming out center ice. Coming up the left side is Hardy over the line into the Detroit zone. And the pass picked off by Eisenman. And Steve Eisenman turns around. Backhands at the length of the ice. It goes right to the Los Angeles goal. So there's no icing. Now Hardy, a bouncing puck. He was checked by Bolderev. It goes loose in the corner. In after it is Wells. Jay Wells left it there. Hardy will chase it along the board. A minute seven remaining now in the penalties to the two players. This time an icing call against Los Angeles as the Kings clear it the length of the ice. An update for the hockey games out of town. I'll just give the walk Chicago and Toronto. Chicago, Toronto is six to three, second period. Due to the Red Wings' uh, playoff schedule, the Harlem Globetrotters game at the Joe Louis Arena, which is originally scheduled for April 7th at 8 o'clock, will be played instead at 1.30 in the afternoon. So tickets purchased for that 8 o'clock game will be honored at that 1.30 Saturday afternoon game. The April 8th Globetrotter game will remain at 1.30 as previously scheduled. For further information, you can call, of course, the Joe Louis Arena. Now the play to the right side of the Los Angeles goal. The Kings win the draw, and Mark Chorney carries in behind his own net. Los Angeles holding the puck deep in their own zone. The wings of Danny Gare and Dwight Foster now at center ice. Larson tipped it away. Foster carries back in over the line. Dwight Foster laid it back out in front, but that's taken instead by Hackinson. Now three on two. Here's the Kings over the line, and the play broken up by Latticer. The puck bounces into the corner. Latticer had to stick up high as he hit the... Los Angeles player, they hold the puck in along the boards in behind the net. The play whistled down, and a face-off will stay in the Detroit end. This, uh, Lattis, yes, Latticer got his stick up fairly high, and uh, it was a play that looked as though it was going to be dangerous, but he certainly cleared the path for the Wings to get possession of the puck. That could well have been a high-sticking call to Randy, but... No go, 32 seconds left now on the penalties to Smith of Detroit, Kelly of Los Angeles. You know, in that game at, St. at Edmonton today, St. Louis scored three unanswered goals in the first period. You think Gretzky scored early in the second, but St. Louis come back with two, three more to make it six to one. Hard to believe, isn't it? It really is. Now the play is in the Detroit zone. John Barrett got the stick on it, couldn't hold it, and Stephan came well out of the net to clear it off the glass, and it bounces back into the Los Angeles end. Heading back after it, Brett Barrett. Laid it into the corner. It comes back to Barrett. Barrett plays it ahead. Moving out now. 
Here's Engblom carrying into the Detroit zone. Brian Engblom checked by Barrett. Still holds it in the corner. Put it right through the goal mouth. Doug Smith took a whack at it. Couldn't control it. Now it'll be Kissio coming out. The penalized players are back on. Greg Smith over the line. Drops it off for Duguay. Ron Duguay right out in front. And Eiserman is stunned. It was Kissio who made a valiant attempt to tip that puck in on a great play from Duguay. Right back down the ice now. Here is Fox carrying into the Detroit zone. Spun around by John Barrett. And Colin Campbell takes it. Kissio tried a little flip of backhand shot. Now the puck stolen away by the Kings out in front of the Detroit goal. And a drive right on a loose truck and Stefan clears that away. Oh, two opportunities. First Nichols and then following in was McClellan. Puck held in by Fox right out in front of the score. Los Angeles gets the goal. McClellan and the wings just popped it up. That was a giveaway deep in the zone. The play along the boards. McLeish had the puck and he threw it. He tried to clear the zone, but he put it right on the Los Angeles player stick. And... Stefan called upon to make two or three saves here in 30 seconds. Finally had the goal scored. McLeish trying to make a play out through center ice. Was intercepted right at the blue line. Back in. And no mistake made by uh, McClellan. McClellan. He's their rookie. 25th goal of the season. So, at uh, 7 minutes and 34 seconds of this first period, Los Angeles jumps into a 1-0 lead. Now Charlie Simmer carries into his own zone. Eddie Johnstone lost his stick, still kicked the puck in behind the Kings goal. But Mark Hardy will bring it back out, a long right side pass. Taken into the Detroit zone, Greg Smith made the check on Fox. Now Brad Park left it there in the corner and Dion sweeps it away. Marcel Dion circles off to the side of the net. Brought it out in front with a drag. That puck was actually tipped in, I believe, by Taylor, who had Greg Stefan all covered up in front of the Detroit net. And now it's 2 to nothing, Los Angeles. Well, the wing's not doing a job of checking in their own zone. It was just a case of L.A. getting the puck, the puck in deep. Nobody challenged Dion until he came back out in front of the net. He just swished it back in. And Taylor, I don't know whether he got a piece of it or Greg Stephan put it in himself. It was a play, though, right along the ice that Stephan made the save. Yes, Taylor. I'm not sure he ever touched the puck. He spun the Detroit goaltender around, and Stephan lost control of it then. Here now is Greg Smith back over the line into the Detroit zone. Sent the puck right to the net, but it's knocked away. Held in now by Boulder and his centering pass didn't get through. And it's brought right back down the ice now by the Kings. Up the left side, Kelly. Kelly carries it into the corner. Brad Park and he collide in along the boards. Park gets up, makes a second check on Kelly. It's still deep, though, in the Detroit zone. Mackinnon knocked down. They still scramble to the boards in the Detroit zone. Gloves ahead by Smith to Boulder out, so the play stopped and a face-off to the left of the Detroit goal. The Red Wings have only a couple of more regular season games at home at the Joe Louis Arena Wednesday, March 28th, against the Toronto Maple Leafs, and then Saturday afternoon, 2 o'clock, against the Chicago Blackhawks. And on Saturday, the first 4,000 youngsters receive a free T-shirt, compliments of the Detroit Free Press. And tickets can be purchased at all the Ticket World outlets. Well, Detroit have their work cut out for them now, Bruce. Down two to nothing here early in the first period. Face off will remain in the circle of the left side of the Detroit goal. Blake Dunlop now to take the face off. Won the draw from Raskowski and in behind his own net, Reed Larson. Larson drives it up the right side. Engblom tied up by Duguay. And here's Dunlop over the line with a drive. And that deflected over the glass up into the crowd off the stick of defenseman Mark Chorney. We have some final scores this afternoon. Uh, Buffalo defeated New Jersey 6 to nothing. Washington at home with Pittsburgh 6 to nothing. Tonight, Hartford went into Quebec and won a game in overtime 3 to 2. Minnesota at the New York Islanders added it 4 to 4. And the Philadelphia Flyers squeezed out the New York Rangers. Final score, Philadelphia 6 to 5. Now here is Vladiser handing it back to Larson with a drive, and he wheeled it just wide. Latticer took a shot. That didn't miss by much. Puck came back to the line, then skips out center ice, and back after it, Randy Latticer of the wings. Ahead to Boulder, Evan, now Eisenman back into the Los Angeles zone. Here's Steve Eisenman trying to get loose, put it out in front, a bouncing puck, tipped away Eisenman. Tried to set up Boulder, Evan, but he was checked from behind by Huckinen, and the play comes right back down the ice. 
Atkinson drove it into the Detroit zone, going in after it. Larson up the right wing now to Dugay. A long left side pass. Here is Bolderev. Bolderev over the line into the Los Angeles zone. Laid it out in front, but the Kings will stop that, and it comes right back up the ice now. Billy Harris. Harris takes it into the Detroit zone, but the play goes in with Raskowski ahead of the puck carrier offside. Pause in the action. 2 nothing. Los Angeles will be back in a moment. Hi, I'm a kangaroo. Okay, and these are kangaroos from J.C. Penny. Also, there are beautiful kangaroos for ladies, sporty kangaroos for boys, a neat pair of kangaroos for girls, and kangaroos for the most important person, for me. So hop over to J.C. Penny and pick up a pair. And don't forget the children. J.C. Penny, your headquarters for kangaroos, the shoes to choose. McClellan and Taylor have scored for the Los Angeles Kings. They lead the hockey game two to nothing during the 10 minute mark of the first period. Colin Campbell lost control. How he's going to pick up a penalty as he tripped Dion. Dion knocked the puck away from Campbell and as he was moving in, Campbell reached out, hauled the skates out from under him. So here comes the first power play. Well, Colin, the puck was up on edge and Colin misplayed it. And as Dion went to pick it up, he just put the stick down and tripped him. Winds up getting a penalty. We shall be back with the power play after we pause for this. Take us out to the ball game. Take us out and you'll see. It's not as tough as it was before. No need for breaking a sin anymore. Cause we're made of super soft leather. Try us out and you'll see. Cause it's Cooper, Cooper. Cooper's, Cooper's the name. It's a new ball game. Cooper, gloves so soft, they're ready to play ball when you are. Colin Campbell off for tripping now at 9.48. Los Angeles with the extra man, but the play broken off by Latticer and Reed Larson drives at the length of the ice. I tell you, the Edmonton Oilers did the Red Wings no favor tonight. They, at home, lost to the St. Louis Blues by a score of 7-1. to one. That's unbelievable. Yep. Here's Mark Hardy out at center ice, driving it off to the side, right out in front of the Detroit goal. So Greg Steffen picks it up. Slid it to the line, but not out. Latticer chases it into the corner, and Randy Latticer finds the opening, drives it down the length of the ice. A minute and a half left in the penalty now to Colin Campbell. Now the play comes back out in front of the Los Angeles goal as Hardy carries out to center ace. The wings have Mano and Foster out, killing the penalty, along with Reed Larson and Latticer. They struggled in along the boards. It came back to Nichols. Nichols swings it back on the line. Hardy drove the shot and it deflected just wide. Charlie Simmer centered it. Here's Tim it to Dion, and Dion fires it home. And the power play goal makes it now three to nothing. Well, that's one thing Marcel Dion can do. He can put the puck in the net, and no, nobody picking him up alongside the net. A real nice pass, though, to him. And he just swished it in before anybody realized that the puck was there. He has done nothing but score goals against this Detroit Hockey Club. That's his 40th goal in 42 lifetime games against the Red Wings. 36th goal of the season for Marcel Dion. Assist to number 18, Dave Taylor. And number 11, Charlie Simmer. Simmer and Taylor draw the assist on the goal at 10.49. And so now the Wings have their work cut out for them. They're down by three, just halfway through the first period. Over the line, into the Detroit zone is Billy Harris. Harris pulls up in the corner. Checked there by Greg Smith. They're going to hold it for a face-off. And a play to the left side of the Detroit goal. Now we have so many people from Detroit here, they're going to be disappointed because they've been waiting to see the Wings. And knowing that the Wings have made a playoff spot, they were kind of anxious to see them come out here and defeat this King team that isn't going to be in the playoffs. Five seconds right now for station identification. This is WKBD TV 50 Detroit. Bruce Martin, Sid Abel, our producer director Toby Cunningham here in Inglewood, California with the Red Wings are trailing this hockey game by a score of three to nothing. Here is Greg Smith bringing the play out to center ice, tipping it back into the Los Angeles zone. Jay Wells in behind his own goal. He's hauled down by Duguay. Two of them bumping in along the boards. Puck didn't come out. Duguay chases with Engblom. 
Eisenman took a heavy bump to the boards. Jay Wells really working on him. Dugay trying to get it loose over in the corner. Eisenman actually pulled it away. But it's knocked down out in front of the Los Angeles goal, and the Kings will bring it out. Ruskowski, he's tied up, and here comes another Detroit penalty. Dugay will go off on the delayed call. Buck goes into the Detroit zone, and as Greg Smith plays it, he took a bump after the whistle from Ruskowski, but the penalty will be coming up to Ron Dugay. Well, Ron Dugay did a terrific job of checking in deep, and as the play comes out, he grabbed a hold of the player and got the penalty. So another power play for Los Angeles. We'll be back for that. Let's pause for this. You can protect everything but your ego. Because they know how it works. And they'll go for it again. Bring out your best. has a taste all its own. Enjoy it. Well, Dugay doing a terrific job deep in the zone, but then coming back, and he did grab a hold of the L.A. Roskowski and pulled him down and got the penalty. But just prior to that, I thought Jay Wells should have had a penalty for grabbing Iserman deep in their zone. Now there's a drive from the blue line by Nichols, knocked away, picked it up a second time, and Stefan makes the save. Dwight Foster takes it off the boards and lifts it down the ice. The holding call to Dugay at 11 minutes and 49 seconds of this first period. 3-0 Los Angeles leads. Now here are the Kings bringing it out to center ace. Nichols drives it in behind the Detroit goal up on the left side. Came to the blue line. Hardy trying to hold it in. Checked in along the boards by Bob Mano. Latticer gets into it. Buck came loose, though, and here now is Nichols back on the left point. Nichols carries into the circle with a drive, and Stefan made the save. A big save by Stefan. Now the puck back on the line. Nichols another drive, and again Stefan knocks it away. Fox dug it out behind the goal in the corner. McClellan back on the line to Hardy. Now Hardy's shot deflected away by Dwight Foster, and Mano knocks it down, skates it to center ace. Foster takes it over the line into the Los Angeles zone with a shot. And Matson kicks that away. Now the Kings will bring it back. Now Jim Fox at center ace. Fox lifting it into the Detroit zone. Latticer and Hardy chase in behind the Detroit goal. Latticer feeds it ahead. Mano got the stick on it. Bob Mano looks for the opening, finds it, and drives it again all the way back into the Los Angeles end. 35 seconds remaining in the penalty to Detroit's Ron Dugay. Here's... Marcel Dion back over the line, tries to go through. Stefan came out of the net, knocked it away from him, and Nichols drives a shot, and Stefan stopped that one. Oh, and Greg Stefan has been caught right now. Over the line, Colin Campbell into the Los Angeles zone, flipped the puck into the corner. 15 seconds left in the Detroit penalty. Dunlop laid it in behind the Los Angeles goal. Kings have come close to number four here. They lead it 3 0. Back down the ice now. It's driven into the Detroit zone by Engblom. They go into the corner after it. Came back to the line for Wells. Dugay back on. A drive knocked down out in front. Dugay takes it off the boards. Dugay swings it ahead to Dunlop. Now Blake Dunlop. Dunlop flips it into the Los Angeles zone. Wells being chased by Boulderev. Tipped it away. It came back to the line. Eisenman held it in for the moment. But it's fired all the way back into the Detroit end. And there will be an icing call. It's back after it is Barrett. Five minutes and 45 seconds to play in the first period. Tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock, a band of World War II resistance fighters attempt to destroy a Nazi atomic bomb plant. Don't miss Kurt Douglas and Richard Harris in Heroes of Telemark tomorrow at 1 o'clock on the Sunday afternoon movie on TV 50. You know, Los Angeles showed us a pretty good power play, and yet they are 19th. They have the practically the worst power play in the National Hockey League, but they certainly had chances to score, and Stefan came up with several big stages. He robbed Nichols three yeah. different times. Now Los Angeles coming out of their own zone. Flip it out, center ice. Hawkinson has it. Play knocked away by Eisenman back at the Detroit blue line. Colin Campbell couldn't reach it. Ruskowski turns with it. Now Ruskowski up the left side. Harris over the line around Campbell. Here's Harris with a drive, and Stefan deflects that one into the corner. In behind his own goal, John Barrett up the right wing. Dugay lets it come out center ice. 
Digging after it, Steve Eisenman being chased by Engblom. Eisenman dug it off the boards, holds it in the Los Angeles zone, gave it to Duguay. Here's Boulder right out in front, he scores! As Duguay and Eisenman do the work, and it's finished off neatly by Boulderev, and it's 3-1. to one. Well, big Ivan Boulderev, and he's having a great year, scoring his 30th goal of the season. A perfect play by Eisenman to Duguay, Duguay to Boulderev. And Boulderev standing over at the far side by himself, picked it up, moved out with a backhand shot, beat Detroit Mark Mat Matson. Scored by number 12. So Ivan what Boulderev, a, what a season he's having, has number 30. And that could be a big goal, Bruce, because this could put the wings right back in it. Uh, two goals down uh, may not beat them, and they just got to come pop up a little bit here. Kissio moves out now with Lambert and McLeish on the wings. Doug Smith centers a line of Kelly in one wing, and over on the other side now for Los Angeles is Steve Kristoff, wearing number 12. Greg Smith in behind his own goal. It tipped off now. Here's Kissio coming out center ice. Lambert up the right wing over the line. Lane Lambert tried to go through. He did. And the puck just skipped away. Held in by McLeish. He rolled it out in front. And Matson knocked that one down. And Brad Clark had it bounce away. And look out. Here come the Kings two on one. Up the left side is Kelly. And Greg Smith came back to ride him into the corner and off the puck. McLeish steers it up the right side. And Brad Clark heads out. Park out at center ice. Up the right wing to Lambert with a drive. And Matson just did get the stick on that. Kissio played it in behind the net and Lambert in after it. Tried to put it out in front. He's given a heavy hit in behind the goal by Doug, or rather Dean Kennedy. Play right out in front. Kissio a bouncing shot. And goaltender Matson reaches out and holds on to that. Oh, Kelly Kissio had more time than he realized. He shot it on the backhand. He could have straightened around and taken a better look and probably got more wood on the puck. Coming up on television, Larry Adderley visits Brad Park at his home to reflect on his distinguished career, his thoughts about the playoffs. Brad Park, our first intermission on TV 50. And all the sports of a busy Saturday on this radio station. And Bruce, we had a young lady come up just prior to the game, and she wanted to say hello to her mom and dad, Barbara. She says, say hello to mom and dad and to Chuck Calabrese in St. Clair Shores. Here's the play from behind the net. Come back, comes back out. Uh, Lambert really got hit in behind the net, but McLeish come up with a puck, give it to Kissio, and could have scored. Now Boulderab drives it into the corner, deep in the Los Angeles zone. Duguay held it in for Eisenman. Steve Eisenman, he was grabbed by Wells and couldn't pull away, and now it'll be Taylor bringing it out. Scooping at center ice. Smith knocks it away there, flipped it back in. The wings making a quick player change now as Wells drives it off to the side of the Detroit goal. Greg Smith lifts it ahead too far for Bob Mano. A bouncing puck. Hardy knocks it down, brought it back into the Detroit zone, and Mano will come back after it. Mano scoops it back out center ice. Three minutes, 40 seconds to go. First period, 3-1. Los Angeles leads. Now the Kings' Jay Wells clearing it ahead to Dion. Marcel Dion turning at center ice. He's got a goal and an assist in this hockey game. Dion back in his own line. Hands it off there to Hardy. Mark Hardy. Bounced it off the skate of his own player, Simmer, and back after it is Gare. Danny Gare, a right side pass to Dwight Foster. Skipped off of him, down the ice, back into the Los Angeles zone. They'll whistle it down for icing and bring the play back into the Detroit end. 3-1, Los Angeles leads. We pause for this. Nobody thought European automotive technology could be affordable. Then Renault introduced Alliance. At first, only a few discriminating buyers recognized the benefits. Sedan Comfort for five, a quiet, smooth ride. But its reputation grew and grew until Alliance became the best-selling American car line launched in 1983. Renault Alliance 5959. European technology that's affordable. The one to watch, the one to watch, the one to watch. Renault. Lane Lambert uh, making a bid for his 20th goal. Makes a great play around the defenseman, but the puck got a little too far in front of him. Matson come out and made the save. Now the play in the Detroit zone. A driving shot by Chorney went just wide. Nichols holds it in. Pass broken up, though, by Dwight Foster. Mano at center ice. Mano drives it into the Los Angeles zone. The wings change quickly now as Eiserman, Boulder, Evan Duguay come out. Here's Chorney. Jorney played it back to the Detroit zone. Back after it is Boulderev. Both teams now making player changes. Checking lines coming on against the scoring units. Boulderev comes out center ice. Ivan Boulderev carries into the Los Angeles zone. Came out in front. Check there. Picked it up a second time. There will be a penalty coming up now to Los Angeles. And as the Kings pick it up, the Red Wings will have their first power play opportunity of the hockey game. 
and Ivan Boldra making a great play, breaking through the defense. They were picking up other players on the Red Wing team and just let Ivan keep carrying the puck, and he swished it right along the ice. Matson had to come up with a big save. Los Angeles penalty, number 14, Billy Harris. Two minutes for hooking. Time of the penalty, 17-23. Ivan, when he finally did get through, uh, Billy Harris put the big hook out, grab, hooked him way up, elbow high, pulled him off stride, well, ended up getting the penalty. Red Wings' power play has been a good one lately. The Wings have scored five of their last nine opportunities. Eighth best record of any power play team and unit in the league. Now in behind his own goal, Brad Park up the right side to Steve Eisenman. Eisenman carries out center ace. Center ice, Boulder have a right wing pass. Dugay chases it in along the boards. He collides with Fred Barrett. The two of them went to the ice. Eisenman digs it away. Sends it back now to Larson with a drive, and it went just wide. And Buck bounced out in front of the goal, then held in at the line by Brad Park. Park hands it off the circle to Boulder have. Ivan Boulder have holds at the rim of the circle, the side of the net. Eisenman carries in behind the goal. Now Steve Eisenman hands it in the corner to Dugay. It bounced away, but he holds it the other corner to Boulderev. Ivan Boulderev circles with it. Here's Boulderev. Sending it back to Park and back to Boulderev along the circle. Back to Park at the blue line. Setting up Reed Larson with a drive. And that just missed. Had that been on, the goaltender was completely screened. Park held it in at the blue line again. Now Brad Park. Hands it back to Boulderev. Ivan Boulderev plays it into the corner to Eisenman. It took a funny bounce off the boards, but Dugay holds it in. Sends it back now to Ivan Boulderev. Boulderev with a drive. The save made by Matson. The puck loose in front of the goal, and it's driven down the ice. And the Wings have had their chances. A minute 15 in the period. 35 seconds remaining now in the Detroit power play. At his own blue line, Brad Park. Now Park comes back into the Detroit end. Up front, Kissio, Lambert, and McLeish now. Brad Park One over minute, the line into the Los Angeles the zone. 20 seconds left in the penalty. Park was driven back out center ice. Kissio came back to cover up. Now Kelly Kissio carries into the Los Angeles zone. His pass didn't get through as Los Angeles picks it up and scoops it center ice. The Kings will play it there. Jim Fox. Fox playing it over the line into the Detroit zone. In behind his own net is Larson. The penalty is over. The Wings didn't score. They had their chances. Here's Larson, center ice. Kissio carries into the King zone. Kelly Kissio pulls up along the circle. Wrapped it in behind the goal. McLeish put it right out in front. They score! The Red Wings now. Lane Lambert gets the goal. And it's a 3-2 hockey game. And there's the rookie picking up his 20th goal of the season on a beautiful play by McLeish. Kissio to McLeish. McLeish out in front of the net. Lambert was there with two players covering him. And he got he got it in the net before Matson could do anything. And but all of a sudden, it's a hockey game. McLeish takes the play around behind the net. And out to Lambert, and he put it in. And the Wings are right back in it. Scored by number 14, Lane Lambert. Lambert, Assistant in his rookie three, year, gets his 20th. And number 16, Kelly Kissio. Kissio draws the other assist, along with McLeish, the goal at... 1937. Played back into the Detroit zone, but the Wings pick it up, bounce it down the ice. Bob Mano in a race with Hardy. Mano wins the race, pick the puck up, pinned in along the boards by Hardy. The two of them hold it there, and the buzzer goes to end the period. A period that saw the Los Angeles Kings get out in front three to nothing at 10:49 of the period. Then the Red Wings coming back with goals by Boulder Evan Lambert, just 23 seconds before the period is over and they skate off in a hockey game another final score toronto defeating chicago blackhawks by a score of seven to three the overall shots and goal in this period were 12 for the los angeles kings and 10 for the red wings so that's the story of the first period action here at the forum in inglewood california the detroit red wings two the los angeles kings three let's pause for this. Please. 
Look, last unique soft drink for 500 miles. Let's start. Wow! How come it's all burger? Well, because it's a one-of-a-kind soft drink. Oh, why don't you tell them, boys? It's the one-of-a-kind soft drink. We need the one-of-a-kind taste. It's the one-of-a-kind soft drink. With the one-of-a-kind taste. Hi, I'm a kangaroo. Okay. And these are kangaroos from J.C. Penny. Also, there are beautiful kangaroos for ladies, sporty kangaroos for boys, a neat pair of kangaroos for girls, and kangaroos for the most important person, for me. So hop over to J.C. Penny and pick up a pair. And don't forget the children. J.C. Penny, your headquarters for kangaroos, the shoes to choose. On TV 50 Sunday afternoon movie, the Nazis are building an atomic bomb. Kirk Douglas has to get to the plant and destroy it. He's one of the heroes of Telemark. Then on movie greats, Knock off that small talk, Mickey. You're under arrest. Heroes of a different kind. Ernest Borgnine and Tim Conway have their own way of fighting the war on McHale's Navy. Heroes of Telemark at 1 and McHale's Navy at 4, Sunday on TV 50. You'll really score this season with a great taste of Kowalski quality on your team. For pregame meals or just a quick snack between goals, you can't beat Kowalski Stadium kielbasa and luncheon meats. Made delicious the old world way. Kowalski now and treat yourself to flavor. And now enjoy delicious stadium kielbasa. Available when you visit Joe Louis Arena for the next Red Wing game. Kowalski, your hockey season flavor it. Early in the season, there were some boos when number 22 took the ice. Boos from fans who didn't like the way Brad Park played because they remembered another style of play. But then you couldn't expect a 15-year veteran with nine knee operations to play the way he used to. Still, the Red Wing front office brought him here to stabilize the power play and add experience at the blue line. And he has done just that. And although Brad Park heard some of those early boos, he didn't let them bother him like the professional that he is. You don't hear a lot of them, you know, so if, if they're way up there, you know, it doesn't filter down. I think you hear uh, more of the whole crowd noise, and uh, it's uh, something where you go out and uh, and you just kind of try and do your job, you know. I remember the first game we, uh, we were playing in New Jersey, and it was a close game, we gambled, and uh, the crowd started, they had a chant going, which, uh, you know, really kind of upset us, but uh, it was uh, early in the season. Then I saw a very heartwarming tribute when they gave you a standing ovation against Winnipeg when you broke Bobby Orr's assist record for defensemen. It appears that they've ad adopted you, and, and you're a Red Wing now. Do you feel that way? Yeah, I do. I do. I feel that way. It's, uh, it's great because uh, you, we were accomplishing something that we want to accomplish all year long, is to be competitive and, and to get in the playoffs and uh, let's see how far we can go. So. Uh, and uh, to do it in Detroit, the fans here have just been great. You know, they've been uh, caught up in the excitement of the Detroit Red Wings, and, and the players have too, so it's, it's been just a great combination. You've played on some good teams in your career. When did it turn around for this team, and was there anything that happened? It seemed like middle of the year, you began to play better hockey. Whether you won the gamers or not, the team was playing better hockey. I think so. I think it started actually... Uh, uh, we played a couple of games against Philadelphia, and we tied both games in our building and in Philadelphia's building. So that was the type of thing where we played a better checking hockey game. And maybe it convinced ourselves that we're not going to score goals in bunches and we're not going to be able to come from behind, so let's not get ourselves out of the game early. So uh, at the start of each game, I think we really bear down, and uh, when we get that lead, we try to add to it, but basically shut down the other team. You had to know that with your experience. Have you been able to pass that along to some of these younger players? I, I think it's a, it's a matter of uh, uh, teaching the, the guys. You know, you can bring up a system, and, he, and Nick does that. You know, he handles all that and does a great job of explaining what we want to do on the ice in the overall picture. Uh, I might go to individuals and one-on-one uh, -on -one in, in certain situations and say, you know, you, you maybe should have moved quicker at this guy and forced him. And uh, I think the biggest difference between the start of the year and now is we are making people do what we want them to do instead of sitting back and reacting to what they do. I know Nick and Danny are the coaches and they handle most of the things, but do you find yourself coaching some? I think not in the necessary, uh, uh, 
not any major decisions. You know, my, like my little things are, are just uh, going to guys and saying, you, you know, you had an option on that play. Uh, you know, maybe you, you should have run a pick here or this and that or, you know, uh, little things, you know, and, and Nick, he takes care of most of the overall things. It looks like the playoffs are a reality for this Red Wing team. Will it be just a token appearance in the playoffs or, or how far can this team go? Well, <clears throat> I don't think any time you go into the playoffs you're going in to be a, a, a token or be laughed at. Uh, we, uh, we played this week a, a game against Boston and St. Louis and we played very well. We didn't win. But the game against Boston, if we had played any team in our division and played like that, we can beat any team in our division. And uh, our job right now is to get second place, get the home ice advantage in the first round. And I believe we can beat whoever we're going to play. And uh, I believe that uh, Minnesota will be a very interesting series. Does playoff hockey or the thought of it rejuvenate Brad Park, get him a little pumped up in March? Yeah, that's when you, that's, you're really getting down to the nitty-gritty. That's when uh, there's no tomorrow. I mean, you, you just can't afford to go out there and be nonchalant. Yeah, every shift, every, uh, every little uh, thing that happened is emphasized even more. It's brought out. It's, uh, it's clutch hockey. It's uh, let's get down and let's do it. And more fun, I suppose. Makes the practices even better. Well, you, that's the best part. You, you're playing like every second day. You don't practice as much. <laughs> <laughs> what about next year? Have you made any decisions on that yet? Oh, I'm uh, I'm ready to play next year. Uh, I know come August time, you know I'm I'm excited right now about this year and and the way we're going to finish and the way we're going to end. And I think that uh, you know they go to the draft and pick up one or two more young guys and they might be able to help us. So uh, next year's a new year, and it'll be great because we'll be carrying the way we're playing now. We'll be starting the year with that kind of philosophy and that kind of confidence, and uh, that can make a, a tremendous difference in the whole season. And maybe fill in the only blank in an otherwise marvelous NHL career of Brad Park and that is to get that name on a Stanley Cup. Well there's no guarantee there never has been but uh, if, you, if we keep improving uh, you know this is a funny game you never know what's going to happen. Brad Park has given the Red Wings a lot and they can give him something this year. If the club makes the playoff it'll keep Park's record intact. He has never missed the playoffs in his 15 years and this 16th season would tie John Delavo's NHL record. But first things first, and that's the Los Angeles Kings. We'll get back to that game with Bruce and Sid after these messages. What does it mean when a Shell dealer displays this sign? It means he makes these important promises to give you a written estimate up front, to have certified mechanics and the right equipment for the job. And he backs his work in writing. In a word, your Shell Auto Care dealer promises to give you quality car repair service right here in your neighborhood. Look for this sign. Shell Auto Care. Is paying extra for a Thorn Apple Valley ham worth it? Here's an ordinary ham. At Thorn Apple Valley, we trim skin, fat, bones, and the tougher cuts, leaving only the tender eye of the round. Here's an extraordinary ham. The 94% lean Thorn Apple Valley Perfect Petite. Here's what it looks like being served. Here's what it looks like after all your guests have had seconds. The Thorn Apple Valley Perfect Petite. And you'll be the one who served it. Only one day, only tomorrow, only at Waterbed City will you see everything on sale. Only tomorrow. Only tomorrow can you get this finished waterbed complete at $195. Only tomorrow. Only tomorrow is every sheet set, pillow, and comforter on sale. Only tomorrow is every waterbed on sale. Only tomorrow. Only tomorrow will you see bedroom suites by Trend West, Pacific, Singer, and Vaughn Bassett all on sale. Don't miss it. Only one day, only tomorrow at Waterbed City in Dearborn Heights, Sterling Heights, and Birmingham. Only tomorrow. Presenting the new Renault Fuego. Inspired by the winningest turbos in Formula One racing. Turbo or 2.2. The new Renault Fuego. So the only question is, turbo or not turbo? The one to watch, the one to watch, the one to watch. Renault. Time has passed, the family's grown. Your kids have kids to call their own. And we're proud to be part of the memories you share. The refreshment that's always been there. Right there. Coke is it, the biggest taste you've ever found. Coke is it, the one that never lets you down. Coke is it, the most refreshing taste around. Coke is it. Coke is it. We are 
are live here at the Forum in Inglewood, California, where the Detroit Red Wings with two late goals pull within one of Los Angeles after the first period. The Kings lead it 3-2. to two. A young man, no stranger to playoff hockey when that time rolls around, is joining Sid right now in our live interview, Eddie Mio and Sid Abel. Eddie it didn't look too good at the 10-minute mark of this first period with the Kings ahead 3-0. But we come back and score two goals. How do you look now for the next 40 minutes to be played? I think we're gonna we're gonna come out stronger and get a few shots. We know we knew going into this game that LA is gonna be going strictly offensively, and they won't be worried too much about defense. You know, this, this time of year they're out of the out of the playoffs. There's a lot of guys going for bonuses. So we did get off to that slow start. They had a, a couple, what do you, you know, a couple penalties and got got behind there. But now all of a sudden we've been coming back, and uh, I think we're going to have the next two good periods, and we'll take it away from them. Eddie. We only have a few seconds. You missed about 25 games because of an injury. You're ready to play now. You're feeling good. Yeah, I'm feeling good. I mean, you know, that game against Minnesota wasn't. It was a heartbreaker. You know, the last goal there, losing. We could have used the points, but. You know, I am feeling better, you know, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm ready to go, but, you know, Nick is, uh, he's got a winning lineup out there, and I don't think he really wants to change it now, so we're just going to, you know, I'm just going to wait and see, keep working hard, and if he wants me, I'm ready, and, you know, we just, main thing is winning right now, and that's, that's all that counts. This club's in the playoffs, and you can be very, very valuable to, valuable to him, Eddie. Congratulations, best of wishes for the rest of the season and everything. Thank you, Sid. See you. Now, let's go back to Bruce Martin. Okay, Sydney and Ed Mio and the Wings indeed fortunate right now to have three very solid goaltenders, which is a predicament but a happy one for Coach Nick Polano. We are in the first intermission here in the Forum in Inglewood, California. Three to two, the Los Angeles Kings lead Detroit. We'll be back with more of the action, but let's pause first for this. You're looking at America's new pizza pizza generation. Because Little Caesars knows that everybody loves pizza. We give you a lot of pizza to love. We use America's finest meats, cheeses, and flour. So Pizza Pizza not only tastes great, it's great for you. Little Caesars Pizza Pizza. We give you a lot of pizza to love. Little Caesars, the old American Pizza Pizza. The night janitor at WJR eyes the microphone of fantasy forms. This is Jane Pauley, NBC News. And now WJR News. I'm Rod Hampton. Well, good morning, world. I'm J.P. McCarthy. Gee, I can go back. Come back again. Joel Alexander, WJR. Warren Pierce on WJR. Stay up It takes a lot of it to brew a beer worthy of the name, the king of beers. Time to select the choicest ingredients. Time for beechwood aging. And over a hundred years of brewing experience. All to make sure that distinctively clean, crisp taste of Budweiser comes through. Time after time after time. Somebody still cares about quality. Nothing like this ever happened to your lawn before. Scott's announces that Turf Builder fertilizer just got better. Now it gives you even healthier growth. And remarkably, Scott's can sell new Turf Builder for less. When Turf Builder gets better and it costs less, that's a breakthrough. New Turf Builder from Scott's. Now you can pay less for the number one selling fertilizer on Earth. Fred and Bob both opened IRAs. Fred at Michigan National, Bob somewhere else. Bob thought he was pretty smart. His bank quoted a higher interest rate. What he didn't know was that Michigan National compounds interest monthly. Bob's bank doesn't. So month after month, Fred earned interest on top of interest. Bob earned less. Don't be fooled by higher interest rates like Bob. Come to Michigan National for your IRA and get more money for your money. Thanks, Michigan National. Where do I sign? Four Wheeler Magazine's Four Wheeler of the Year is Jeep Cherokee. Four Wheel and Off Road's 4x4 four four of the Year is Jeep Cherokee. Off Road makes it unanimous. For the first time ever, all three leading Off Road Magazines pick the same winner the all new, leaner, meaner sized Jeep Cherokee. 
drive the triple award-winning Cherokee and Wagoneer sport wagons only from Jeep. It's unanimous. Two goals about the last five minutes of that first period, tightening this hockey game up. The Red Wings uh, fell behind on the goal by McClellan, the rookie. As the play came right out in front of the Detroit goal, fed in by Fox at 7.34, one nothing for the Los Angeles Kings. And then it was Taylor uh, who well, scored, set up by Dion. Right, he just swished it along the ice, and Taylor, I think, just knocked it right out of Greg Steffen's uh, glove uh, as Greg had the puck. But they put on a lot of pressure, and Dion come right back and took a perfect pass from Taylor. And he put it in for a 3-0 lead, and things really did look bad for the Wings. Ivan Bolderev, though, got one back. His 30th goal of the season, a backhander, Duguay. All right, but assisting. And then the goal with just a few seconds to go. In fact, 23 seconds to go on the period. Lambert getting his 20th on a perfect pass from McLeish from behind the net to put the Wings right back into things. Okay, and now we're back to the live action as this second period is underway. We'll get a scoring summary here in a moment. Here is Ron Duguay bringing it back out center ice. Duguay carries into the Los Angeles zone, flipped the puck out in front of the Los Angeles net, and it's cleared away by Brian Engblom. Engblom sends it center ice. Greg Smith of the wings at his own blue line, handing it there now to Brad Park. Bolderev tipped it into the Los Angeles zone. The Kings Engblom shot it back out, so the wings pick it up and play it off to the side of the Los Angeles goal. It's held in by Bolderev. Ivan Bolderev's pass. Duguay tied up Ruskowski. Eisenman trying to get loose. It came back to the line, but fired back out center ice by Harris. Greg Smith chases it back into the Detroit end. A rink-wide pass for Brad Park. Center ice to Eisenman. Here is Steve Eisenman back over the line. His pass bounced away from Duguay, and it'll be brought back out center ice. Hackinson failed to get loose. And then Ruskowski had it tipped all the way back into the Los Angeles end, and it goes in offside. Marshall Auto Care scoring summary. McClellan from Fox at 734. Then Taylor, Dion, and Simmer at 809. The power play goal by Dion. Taylor and Simmer at 1049. Then Ivan Bolderev got his 30th of the year. Dugay and Eisenman at 1455. And Lane Lambert's 20th from McLeish and Kissio at 1937 to make it a 3 2 score as the Red Wings are outshot 12 and 11 in that first period. You know, Bruce, and the fact that St. Louis won tonight in Edmonton. If the Wings were to win this hockey game, uh, I would think it still would favor Detroit to finish second with three games remaining. Now the long shot into the Detroit zone. John Barrett fires it up the right side. Lane Lambert, a bouncing rolling puck, swings it out center ace, and Dion knocks it away. Now here's Taylor bringing it back into the Detroit zone. Charlie Simmer trying to cut in, fired it right through the goal crease. It'll be held in at the blue line, driven in behind the Detroit goal. Simmer went in after it, fell over his own man, but the puck pulled loose, and a shot knocked away by Stephan as Taylor brought it right out in front. Now the Wings' McLeish heads back. McLeish drives it into the corner in the Los Angeles end, but the Wings are going to the bench for a player change. Carried back to the Detroit line, Danny Gare shot it back out center ice. Now it'll be taken by Jay Wells, who flips it high in the air, sends it in behind the Detroit goal. Mano pinned in along the boards there by Simmer, gets it loose, and it's John Barrett. His pass didn't come out. Here's Nichols with a drive, and Stephan has grabbed onto that, and it's now in the net. Oh. No whistle, and the puck actually just fell off the pads of Greg Stephan and ends up behind him, and it is 4-2 to two Los Angeles. Well, Greg had the puck and probably didn't realize it, Bruce. He straightened out, and then he finally dropped it. The puck hit him just up above the pads. He thought he had it tight and dropped down between his legs. And I don't know but what somebody tipped it yeah, in it behind him. I believe it was Taylor that charged in there. A big goal for Los Angeles to take the two-goal lead again, but... Uh, it's one case where Greg Steffen very seldom loses possession like that. Simmer may have got a whack at it. Simmer. Yep. So Charlie Simmer actually was the one that got the last whack at it. Gets his 41st goal of the season. And Los Angeles a two-goal lead. The way this game is going, there will be a few more goals before it's all over. Now the play into the Detroit end. Brad Park sweeps it ahead for Bolderev. Duguay coming up the right side. They move in. Here's Bolderev with a drive. Then Matson grabbed onto it, lost it, it, and it ends up in the net. He, put he it threw in. it in himself. Very similar to the goal that scored just a moment ago on the, in the Detroit end. 
Matson made the save. He didn't know just where the puck was, and as he fell back, he put it in the net. And Ivan Bolderev will get credit for his second goal of the night. Or maybe not. Maybe Duguay Duguay might have, uh, Duguay might have knocked it, too. We'll have to wait for the announcement on the goal, but the wings are right back into it. 27 seconds after Simmer had scored. Bolderev gets the goal. Brad Park draws the assist. It'll be the 31st goal of the season, the second of the game for Ivan Bolderev. Eisenman trying to get loose, couldn't do it, and now the Kings bring the play off to center ice, lift it into the Detroit zone. Park tipped it away. Raskowski holds it in. Hawkinson played it into the corner, but the Wings will go in after it. Steve Eisenman, a lead pass. Now to Bolderev, up the right side, Duguay. And it just tipped too far for him. Duguay will hold it in. Drives it into the corner, deep in the Los Angeles zone. We're three minutes into the period, the second, and it is four to three. Los Angeles leads by a goal. Back over the line, Hawkinson carries into the Detroit end, drives it in behind the goal. Into the corner, Ruskowski trying to get it loose, but he was tied up by Greg Smith and Bolderev heads out. Center ice to Brad Park. Here's Park up the right wing. Duguay slides it into the corner. Park goes in there with Fred Barrett. In behind the net. Eisenman trying to get it loose. Being checked there by Fox. He still played it to the side of the goal. And Matson is going to hold on to it. And a play remains in the Los Angeles end to the left side of the Kings goal. We have a pause in the action. It is 4-3 Los Angeles. We'll be back in a moment. You know you'll get the job done right. We take pride in what we do, cause we care about the work we do for you. Trust the Midas Touch. 78 MGB. Trust the Midas Touch. Where nothing but the best is ever gonna do. Thanks. Trust the Midas Touch. There are 47 Midas Muffler shops in the greater Detroit area. Check the white pages for the shop nearest you. Kind of a wild game. We've played three and a half minutes of the second period. And it is four to three Los Angeles. Face off to the left to the Kings goal. Two strange goals here yeah. in a matter of uh, half a minute. Now Kissio fights his way into the corner. Laid it off to the side of the goal. It's puck stayed right there in the corner. Kissio goes in after it. He's knocked to the ice by Nichols. Held the puck and then it's tipped away right at the blue line. And slides back into the Detroit zone, and Larson whacks it back out center ice. The Kings brought it back in offside. So well, the play comes out over the Detroit blue line. I didn't think the Los Angeles Kings would play this type of a game. They're, they're, they're playing the body and being fairly rough. The wings are being knocked around a little bit. Our trivia quiz. Who was the only Red Wing to win the MVP playoff trophy? Alex Del Vecchio, Roger Crozier, Gordy Howe. The trivia quiz brought to you by WJR Radio. And I know the answer to that one. So do I. You were coaching and I, I was, was broadcasting coaching. the right. game. Now the play comes back out to the center ice area, driven right back in by Kennedy. Larson drives it off the boards, didn't get it out. Now it's the Kings holding it in. Played still in the Detroit zone, digging it after it now. Kennedy. Here's Kennedy trying to work away. McLeish tipped it off his stick and Kissio. Played it off the boards and sends it back to the Los Angeles blue line. Kissio takes it a second time. Into the King zone. Hands it off to Rick McLeish with a drive and the save made. On the short side that time by goaltender Matson. Here's Kissio holding it in. Kissio sends it back now to Randy Latticer. Latticer faked the shot. Latticer goes to the corner. A centering pass sent right to the goal mouth. And Matson just reaches out and holds on to it. And I'll tell you, this is very loose play. Yes, it is, but the wing's coming close to tying this hockey game. Putting a little pressure on them. Lambert, this line has looked good. Kissio. Lambert and McLeish, uh, a new makeshift line, really, is because of injuries. But Latticer trying to get the puck out in front to Lambert, didn't find, didn't get it quite, quite through, and finally Matson had to gather it in to get a whistle. Paul and Peter Bogus want to say hello to all the players in the Gross Point Hockey Association. The two boys are hockey players, and they're here with their dad. Bad Loisel is in behind the Detroit bench. Uh, he is uh, wearing the headset and taking the suggestions of assistant coach Danny Belisle and relaying them on to coach Nick Milano. Oh, what a great young man he is. Uh, and he's going to be a valuable hockey player to this team, too. They've got a winning combination going, so they're just keeping to it instead of playing Claude right now. John Barrett takes his shot from the blue line. It was knocked down before it got through, and the puck driven all the way back into the Detroit end. They wave off the icing, and Bob Mano feeds it ahead to Foster. Foster lays it out to center ace. 
Slides back into the Los Angeles zone, heading in after it. Mark Chorney going in behind his own goal. We have played now five minutes of the second period, four to three, the Kings lead. Now they drive at the length of the ice. This time there will be an icing call as Colin Campbell is back after it in the play. Dwight Foster again is bent over, coming oh, to the he's Detroit bench. Again. He's been shaken up. Yes, he, he just can't get healthy. Uh, he gets banged up nearly every game that we play. But what a valuable hockey player he is. And, uh, he is one of the most fierce checkers that uh, anybody in hockey. He just dogs them and dogs them until they make mistakes. Pierre Aubrey comes out now to take his spot on the line with Mano and Danny Gare. Dwight Foster being attended to by Jim Pengelly. Now the faceoff stays to the left side of the Los Angeles goal. Marcel Dion got the puck loose and in behind his own net now is Brian Englom. Englom cleared it to the line but not out. Mano held it in. Here's Danny Gare digging it off the boards. Gare trying to pull away from Simmer's check. Pierre Aubrey gets into it. He took a whack from Chorney. And they're down on top of the puck and a faceoff remains in the Los Angeles end to the right side of Marcus Matson. The Wings will re be returning home meeting the Toronto Maple Leafs Wednesday night. Our radio broadcast at 725. If you can't make it firsthand to the Joe Louis Arena. Then Saturday afternoon, the Chicago Blackhawks. And that'll be a home and home afternoon series. With the next game being played at Chicago Sunday afternoon. We have so many people up here with notes. Uh, Lloyd Hemelhorse uh, from Wet Seal, Seal Beach, California, wants to say hi to his friends Kathy, Bob, and Sarah back in the Detroit area. Here's John Barrett driving a shot from the line. It went up high, and Matson grabs it and drops it off. Now the Kings will come out of their own zone. Down the right side, Kristoff took it to the line. He's bumped heavily to the ice by John Barrett. Buck ends up in behind the Detroit goal and Colin Campbell. Campbell, he's driven to the boards, knocked sprawling by Kelly. Meanwhile, the play bounces back into the Los Angeles zone. Kelly's been throwing his weight around. Right back down the ice, here's Doug Smith. He played it over the line, knocked away by Barrett. And Bolderev, a right wing pass. Duguay carries into the Los Angeles zone, drops it off for Eisenman. Eisenman, a backhand shot, and the save made by Matson. And Kristoff steers it in behind his own goal. Kelly, Kelly, his pass went off of Duguay back into the Detroit end and back after it, Greg Smith. 4 3, Los Angeles with the lead. Played six minutes, 20 seconds of this. Here's a quick pass ahead to Bolderev, and it bounced in, and Bolderev ahead of the play, offside. This line, Bolderev, Eiserman, and Duguay putting on quite a show here. Here's a reminder to our Red Wing season ticket holders. You have until next Thursday at 6 o'clock in the evening to pick up your playoff tickets. Season ticket holders may also purchase an additional ticket for each season ticket you hold. All the remaining tickets will go on sale to the general public next Friday, March 30th at 10 o'clock in the morning. Playoff tickets will be sold only at the Joe Louis Arena, and you must purchase the three-game series, and there is a limit of tickets for purchase. The away games will be on television 50 as well as on this radio station so we're looking for some fun here's Eisenman back over the line with a shot that deflected into the corner off the arm of the goaltender Matson. Kings pick it up didn't get it out Duguay managed to hold it in Roskowski checked him though knocked it away then Greg Smith knocked his man Hawkins into the ice the play came out center ice and Eisenman feeds it back to Bolderev he failed to get over the line Greg Smith flips the puck back into the Los Angeles end they're stepping into one another Mark Hardy Drove it out center ice. The Los Angeles player had fallen. Hawkinson, and here's Eisenman heading back. Steve Eisenman tried to cut through. Eisenman laid it into the corner. Boulder up, put it out in front. That's knocked away. Eisenman digs it out of the corner again. Steve Eisenman sends it off the side of the net to Bolderev. Ivan Bolderev took a shot off to the side of the goal. Duguay went digging after it. Hardy was there to cover up, though. And it's bounced out center ice with Greg Smith back after it. Now the wings supplying the pressure. Here is Brad Park. Park carrying back over the line. Drove a shot. It was knocked down. Didn't get through. Off Jay Wells. And the puck comes out center ice. Greg Smith stopped that. Cleared ahead to Bolderev. Ivan Bolderev brought it all the way back to his own blue line. Pulls away from Nichols' check. Here now Bolderev down the right side. Carries in. Left the puck right at the line. It came out center ice. Back after a Duguay. Ron Duguay turning with it there. 
Duque ahead now to Kissio. Kelly Kissio laid it into the Los Angeles zone. Hardy chased it into the corner. McLeish came in, knocked it away. McLeish held it in. Kelly Kissio couldn't get to it. It's held though by McLeish off the side of the net to Kissio. Kissio brought it out in front and it bounced off his stick. Held in at the line by Randy Lattiser. Lattiser hands it in the circle now to Kissio. Here's McLeish still turning along the board. McLeish laid it into the corner. Kissio goes in after it. Jay Wells checking him out in front of the goal. Lambert, he's doing some shoving out there with Hardy. And now Mark Hardy and Lambert are going at it right out in front of the goal. Lambert and Hardy. Lambert got that right hand free for a couple of punches. Landed it again. And Hardy has not punched back. He's been taking a whacking finally. He throws Lambert to the ice. And the two linesmen get into it. They had the sticks up high as Lambert was trying to fight for position out in front of the goal. And the two of them will go off. Well, this should have been called prior to the start of the fight because they were high sticking one another. Lambert trying to get in position out in front of the net. And the referee just letting them do it. And finally they dropped their sticks and decided to start swinging. Both of them got some pretty good punches in. I wouldn't, I don't see how these fellows can fight with those helmets on because I would think every time you would, oh, they've got a terrific right. To... Well, there's a pause in the action. Los Angeles leads it four to three. We'll be back in a moment. Those who ride the luge are like a small club and they're the only ones who know if you're good. Is clear for Conway, USA. Conway, ride with us. It has a taste all its own. Enjoy it. Bruce Martin along with Sid Abel, our producer-director Toby Cunningham here in Inglewood, California, the forum where the Red Wings trail 4-3. to three. Fighting penalties to Lambert and Hardy. Offsetting penalties. Dwight Foster's on the Detroit bench and seemingly is okay. Now here come the Kings out of their own zone. Ryan Engblom carries out center A, scoops it into the Detroit zone. Rick McLeish with Fox chasing him. Fired it up the right side, but it'll be held in by Barrett. Barrett drove it off the boards. Here's Kelly Kissio picking it up ahead to McLeish. Now Rick McLeish has Eddie Johnstone on the right side, laid it in behind the Los Angeles goal. Fired over along the boards. They still scramble in the corner. It's knocked away by Johnstone. Kissio goes in after it. Wings are beating to the puck. Mc shot by McLeish was blocked by Fred Barrett. Puck came back to the line. Latticer's shot. That hit Fox. Latticer picks it up again. Latticer with a drive. And the goaltender was actually down. He made a bad move and was down and out of the play. Matson, but the shot never got through to him. And Larson chases it in behind his own goal. I don't know what Matson was thinking about just then. I think he may have hurt himself. He, he was down sideways. Now the play in behind the Los Angeles net. Engblom goes in after it. Brian Engblom up the right side to Taylor. Taylor sends it out center ice. Nichols carried to the line. Here's Bernie Nichols and Duke, or rather uh, Gare slapped it away from him. It's held in. Came back to the blue line. Barrett shot blocked by Gare. And coming quickly back after it, Mark Chorney turns at his own line. Chorney swept it all the way back into the Detroit and the play over two lines is offside. We have 10 minutes and 23 seconds to go here in the second period. 4-3 to three Los Angeles. Thursday night at 8 o'clock, tune in for NBA action at its best when the Detroit Pistons take on the New Jersey Nets from Burns Arena in New Jersey. It's Thursday at 8 o'clock, TV 50, your choice for sports in Detroit. Sid, our congratulations go to the Detroit Pistons who right here in Los Angeles uh, in this very building last night since the playoff berth. Yes, it's very nice. Latticer shooting with Matson sideways, and the puck hit his skate. Could have been the tying goal. Now here, Jay Wells of Los Angeles up the right side to Taylor, broken up by Foster. Foster moves in. Dwight Foster with a drive and a penalty coming up to Los Angeles. There'll be a holding call to the Kings, and Detroit now will have the power play opportunity as we near the midpoint of the second period. And this has been Detroit's strong point all season long, their power play. We'll be back with that power play. Let's pause first and put it. This is the bank. Do not watch this commercial. Hi, got to tell you how to make more money on your IRA only from Michigan National. You didn't hear that. Yes, you did. 
You see, Michigan National compounds interest monthly, so you earn interest on top of interest, and you get a better return for your money. Other banks, like them, don't give you that. Remember, you didn't hear any of that. Yes, you did. Michigan National, we give you more money for your money. Jay Wells grabbing on to Dwight Foster, picks up a holding penalty at 9 minutes and 54 seconds. And so the Red Wings will have the power play opportunity for the second time. Kings win the faceoff, though, and drive it to the blue line. It didn't come out. Hawkinson picks it up, shoots it back to the Detroit line, and Larson is there. Reed Larson sending it ahead now to Brad Park. Park hands it back to Larson, and Larson turning away from one check, but his pass will be taken away center ice by the Kings. Mark Chorney has it, and Chorney shoots it back into the Detroit end. Stefan stops it in behind his own goal. Larson lost it, taken away by Hawkinson. And Hawkinson hands it off. Ruskowski with a shot. And that uh, time, Greg Stefan just mishandled it after the Red Wings gave it away. Uh, that was a bad goal. Well, Greg wasn't ready for the shot. Ruskowski just fired an easy one. It was like a change of pace shot. The Greg not set in the net. But the Wings giving the puck away in their zone, and even though Los Angeles a man short, and Greg sure uh, wasn't ready for that. It went right through his legs. Roskowski scoring. And that was not a hard shot by any means. So the Wings are down by two, and they've got their work cut out again. That's a bad goal. The Wings gave it up. Caught the puck up deep in their own zone on a power play, which is rather an unpardonable sin. But the way this game has been going, it doesn't mean a whole lot. Now here are the Kings breaking out again. Over the line, Dion with a drive. Stefan made the save, and the rebound just barely knocked away. Eisenman heads back with Bolderev. Ivan Bolderev into the Los Angeles zone. Bolderev takes it toward the corner. Bolderev has it there now to Dugay. Dugay just dumps it along the boards. Eisenman holds it in the corner again. Steve Eisenman sends it out to Bolderev and he fanned on it. Oh, a big opportunity and Bolderev had it bounce away from him. Here is Eisenman with it now. Eisenman hands it in the corner to Ron Dugay. It hit the referee's skate. Eisenman will hold it in. Eisenman off the circle. Steve Eisenman trying to move out in front, but it was knocked away from him and driven all the way down the ice by Billy Harris and 35 seconds remain in the penalty. Wings have the extra man, but the Kings scored. Hawkinson assisting Ruskowski. Coming out of their own zone now, Detroit, Brad Park, carrying out center race. Here is Park. Over the line, into the Los Angeles zone, then just shot it in behind the goal, and Matson stops it there, plays it off to Fred Barrett. Johnstone runs into him. They jam it in along the boards. Barrett holds it. Now the Wings trying to dig it loose, but the play is stopped, and a face-off will stay in the King's end off to the left side of Marcus Matson. You know, we were talking at the start of the game about how well Greg Ste Stefan has played. Uh, I would think this is probably his first off-color night all season long. He has had problems. But two or three uh, kind of go through them. Face off to the left side of the Los Angeles goal, and the Kings gain possession, which Skowski does, and drives it all the way back into the Detroit end. Stefan clears it ahead now for Brad Park. Here's Park coming out. Park, a right side pass. Kissio carries it over the line. Lifted off the boards into the corner. Eddie Johnstone in after it. Left it in the corner, and Wyskowski trying to work away from Rick McLeish. And the Kings again drive it the length of the ice. The penalty, though, is over, and so this time there'll be an icing call. And the faceoff will come back into the Los Angeles end. Seven minutes and 49 seconds still to play in this, the second period. My social notes, Tom and Val Boyd want to say hello to the Westland Michigan people from Tucson. 5-3 Los Angeles. We pause now for this. You can protect everything but your ego. Because they know how it works. And they'll go for it again. Bring out your best but wise love. Bring out your best but wise love. The best has a taste all its own. Enjoy it. play back in here at Los Angeles a drive from a line by Pierre Aubrey well off target the rebound comes out center ice Greg Smith clears it ahead Blake Dunlop turns it again 
Here's Dunlop charging back into the Los Angeles zone, trying to go through. Knocked away from him, held in by Aubrey with a drive, and then Bolderev scores! Ivan Bolderev picks up the loose puck, and now it's 5-4. to four. And Ivan Bolderev gets his hat trick and his 33rd goal of the season. 32nd. 32nd goal of the season. He is just in the right spot at the right time, picking a rebound up off the goaltender and putting it behind Matson to put the wings back in the game again. Dunlop getting, I would think, one of the assists, but Bolderev, and Bolderev actually carried the puck off Matson's pads up well, into the Well, it was Aubrey that fired the shot, I believe, that came out. Now the play goes into the corner, deep in the Los Angeles zone, lifted in the air and cleared back into the Detroit zone. Dunlop and Obrey draw the assist. Now Pierre Obrey up the right side to Bolderev. Back over the line is Kelly. Rather, Dunlop with a shot that went wide. Kelly really drove Greg Smith to the ice, but here's Bolderev moving in with a shot that just cleared the crossbar. Now Greg Smith and Kelly again collide over along the boards. Buck comes back to the line and has fired the length of the ice, and there'll be an icing call against Los Angeles. And I'll tell you, the way the Kings are playing so loosely in their own zone, I'd have to say, Sid, that this is going to be a oh, this, this high scoring game. A, a, probably wind up 9-8 or something, but Smith and Kelly really tangling. And that is really where both players are putting their sticks up and their elbows up, but uh, nothing is being called. But when the Kings seem to go in spurts, when the uh, uh, Dion Simmer line is out, they seem to put a little pressure on the wings. But then when they leave, Detroit take over and uh, do everything but put the puck on the net uh, often enough to get this thing tied. Our next radio broadcast will be Wednesday night from uh, Joe Louis Arena, the Toronto Maple Leafs in the Red Wings. Our next telecast, the first road game with the playoff. Where, when, or who, you can't be too sure. Again, the Kings drive the puck back into the Detroit zone as Reed Larson comes back after it. Now Larson lifts a bouncing puck, knocked down center ice by Englom. Englom failed to work it too far. The Wings drive it back into the Los Angeles end. Mark Jorney goes after it. Clears it out center ice. Latticer knocks it down there for Detroit. Randy Latticer, though, lost control at the line. And here's McClellan heading back, ahead now to Fox. Jim Fox carries toward the corner, played it in behind the Detroit goal and Lane Lambert. Left it there. It'll be knocked out in front of the Detroit net. Latticer clears it center ice. McLeish couldn't get to it there. At his own blue line. Cleared by Kennedy. It bounces center ice again. Larson has it. Larson's pass knocked down. Over the line now is Nichols. Nichols handed it off. And Larson came back to tie up Fox. Now Jim Fox goes into the corner. The puck's lining around in the Detroit end. And Lambert picks it up and heads back for Detroit. Lane Lambert over the line. Here's Lambert. He laid it into the corner. Kissio goes in after it. Kissio tipped it off to the side of the goal. That puck hit a skate, and the Kings will bring it out. Up the left side now. Nichols carried into the Detroit zone. Nichols drops it off for Fox. Fox was turned around, and Latticer will head back for Detroit. Randy Latticer up the left side. McLeish. He had to wait at the line, didn't do it. Kissio had been shoved in ahead of the play offside, and so a faceoff comes out over the Los Angeles blue line. It is 5 to 4, Los Angeles. We'll be back in a moment. This man is looking for his life insurance policy. He wants to compare it with the Challenger, the universal life policy from Life of Virginia. Are his premiums flexible? The Challengers are. Can he change coverage as his life changes and get competitive current interest rates on his cash value? He can with the Challenger. This is Larry Adderley. Call my good friend Gene Mitchell at Professional Life Underwriters toll-free. He'll show you the benefits of the Challenger from Life of Virginia. Let's take five seconds for station identification. You're watching WKBD TV 50 Detroit. 5-4, the Kings lead Detroit. Puck driven back into the Detroit zone, coming in after it, John Barrett of the wings. Now Barrett sent it up the right side, tipped ahead by Gare, and coming out is Foster with Mano. Foster's pass went too far out in front of Bob Mano. Still though, it's in the Los Angeles zone. Foster was spun around, Simmer checked in along the boards by Gare, and the puck rolls in behind the Los Angeles goal. Kings in after it, and Gare moved in, knocked it away from Wells. Now Jay Wells shoots it up the left side. Charlie Simmer lost it. Here's Danny Gare handing it off to Mano. Mano played it back to John Barrett with a shot that went wide. 
Puck ends up in behind the goal, and going there is Foster. Foster took it away. Dwight Foster sends it out to Barrett with a drive. A loose puck out in front, and Gare knocked down. And a penalty will be coming up to the Los Angeles Kings now. But I'll tell you, you talk about checking. Foster and Gare and Mano, unbelievable. We'll be back with the Detroit Power Play in a moment. Hi, I'm a kangaroo. Okay, and these are kangaroos from J.C. Penny. Also, there are beautiful kangaroos for ladies, sporty kangaroos for boys, a neat pair of kangaroos for girls, and kangaroos for the most important person, for me. So hop over to J.C. Penny and pick up a pair. And don't forget the children. J.C. Penny, your headquarters for kangaroos, the shoes to choose. Well, Detroit with the play We're coming in on the net. Danny Gare trying to get the rebound, and Wells just cross-checked him across the back and knocked him down, got the penalty. I think the last power play the Wings had when Wells was off and the Kings scored a shorthanded goal was the worst they have looked in uh, the last two, three weeks on a power play. So we'll see if they can put it together now. Dugay, Boulder, Evan Eisenman up front with Park and Larson. Larson carries center ice and drives it off the glass in behind the net. Matson came out of the goal to stop it there. Dugay tied his man up. They go into the corner after it. Eisenman got it loose. Now here's Brad Park along the boards, dumping it into the corner. Fred Barrett and Dugay hold one another there. Boulder up trying to dig it away. Dugay comes out with it back on the line to Brad Park. Park sends it back in the circle. Dugay with a drive and it deflected over the top of the net. Eisenman takes it off the boards, holds it in. Steve Eisenman. His pass was knocked down. Larson, though, managed to hold it in in the corner to Boulderev. Ivan Boulderev, he played it behind Larson, and the Kings will pick it up and scoop it back into the Detroit zone, and Brad Park heads back after it. Now a minute remaining in the penalty to Wells of Los Angeles, Detroit, moving back out of their own end. Brad Park, Park up the right side to Eisenman. Here is Steve Eisenman back over the line. Eisenman pulls up in the circle, goes to the corner. Eisenman tried to set up Larson, but that was knocked away. The pass never came through. And it slides again back to the Detroit line as Park comes back after it. Dropping it there for Larson. 35 seconds left in the penalty. Larson's pass tipped too far for Kissio. In behind his own net now, Brian Engblom. And Engblom finds the opening, bangs it off the glass to center ice, and Larson will take it there. Now Reed Larson gives it to Kissio. Kelly Kissio flipped it into the corner. Lambert went digging it after it, but Matson came out of the net, sent it up the left side, and it's cleared again, this time by Harris, the length of the ice. We have two and a half minutes to play here in the second period. Five to four, Los Angeles. Five seconds remaining in the penalty. Time for one last rush. Here's McLeish. Rick McLeish up the right side. Kissio carries in, drops it back to McLeish. McLeish with a shot, and that's deflected wide. Penalty is over. The Kings back at full strength, and the play comes back into the Detroit zone with Larson. Firing it back to center ice. Now McClellan stopped by McLeish, and Larson heads back. Reed Larson. Drives it off to the side of the Los Angeles goal. Chorney goes in behind his own net. Mark Chorney heading back now for the Kings. Up the right side to Bernie Nichols. Broken up by Latticer right at the Detroit blue line. Rick McLeish turns it back to his own line. Dumps it ahead for Greg Smith. Here is Smith. Smith flipped it off to the side of the Los Angeles goal again. They dig it into the corner. And this time there will be an icing call against Los Angeles as they drive it the length of the ice. Latticer back after it in a faceoff comes back into the Kings. Ladies and gentlemen. And LA have stopped skating, Bruce. The Wings have got a great chance to get back in this now. Coming up on television, Nick Polano gets back to the basics on Coach's Corner. Talks about skating with a little help from Paul Woods. Coach's Corner in our second intermission on TV 50. And the news of a busy Saturday will be coming your way on radio. And you couldn't pick a better example than Paul Woods for skating because he is one of the finest skaters in the National Hockey League. You should make mention of the fact that Paul didn't make the Western trip. He remained at home along with the injured John O'Grotnick. Now the play is still deep in the Los Angeles zone. They scrambled along the boards. Dunlop came out with it. He missed Greg Smith on the pass, though, and now breaking down McClellan over the line into the Detroit zone. But tipped away and ends up toward the corner as Greg Smith was bothering him. McClellan again, though, gains control. His pass comes out to Hardy. Hardy lost it. And now Dunlop will bring it back out center ace. Dunlop lifts it into the Los Angeles zone. Latticer goes in deep, tried to center it, knocked away. And the Kings come right back. We have a minute to go here in the second period. Nichols carried into the Detroit zone. He's hauled down and a penalty coming up to Eddie Johnstone. He'll go off. 
And now Los Angeles will have the extra man. And this is one thing Detroit don't want to do, is take penalties at this stage. Uh, this was an innocent play, and Eddie got the stick out. And give him a little hook. I think the player helped a little bit by just throwing his body to make sure there was a penalty called. But the wings are within one. They've got to stay on the ice now. Johnston will go off for hooking. 19 minutes and six seconds of this second period, and the Kings lead it five to four. The Kings have one power play goal and one shorthanded goal in the game. Each team now is at five penalties. They're 19th in power play results, but the power play that they have shown tonight uh, appears to be a pretty good one. They can put some players on that really know how to put the puck in the net. Now the puck came back. Here's Engblom with a drive, and Stefan knocked it away. Dug out of the corner by Dion. He sends it back to Engblom again. Over on the left point, Jay Wells. Wells drove it off to Simmer. Simmer holds it along the rim of the circle. Put it out in front. Knocked away by John Barrett. And Dunlop will shoot it the length of the ice. Back after it now, Engblom circles in behind his own goal. 30 seconds remaining in the period, and Engblom taking up a lot of time. In behind his own net, feeds it ahead to Dion. Marcel Dion drove a shot from the blue line. Stefan stops that, gave it to Larson, and Larson drives it off the boards, and that took a good bounce for Detroit, and goes the length of the ice. And 10 seconds remaining in the period. The wing short a man, Engblom a quick pass this time to center ice for Simmer. Charlie Simmer hands it back, and Engblom drove a long shot. Foster drove the rebound into the corner, and time will run out as the buzzer goes to end the second period of play. Each team scored two goals in that second period, and after two periods of play here at the Forum in Los Angeles, the Detroit Red Wings, four, and the Los Angeles Kings, five, and we're going to pause now for this. This is Coach's Corner with head coach Nick Polano. Brought to you by the 35 Tubby Sub Shops. The last place you had a sub this good was here. What has red ripe tomatoes, garden fresh lettuce, onions, mushrooms, seasoned salami, lean ham, layers of cheeses, and a dressing famous for its taste on buns baked fresh every day? What has 25 different varieties like steak, burger, or Italian made to order hot or cold ready in minutes? And what can be found in 32 convenient locations? What else? Tubby's famous submarine sandwiches. The last place you had a sub this good was here. Tonight's topic, skating. Welcome to Coach's Corner. I'm Larry Adderley with head coach Nick Polano of the Red Wings. Nick, uh, being a good skater won't necessarily earn you a position in the NHL, but not being a good skater might keep you out of the big leagues. Well, that's for sure, Larry. There's just no way today in today's game with the speed that's uh, needed to play in the National Hockey League. If you're not a good skater, you just won't play in the league. It's the one area that has kept a lot of hockey players in the minor leagues and uh, that's the importance of being a good skater. Can you improve on a pro's skating ability? Well, I think basically we do a lot of good hard skating in practice and the players will improve a small, uh, a small amount during the practices, but I, I, I think you have to look at players at a young age uh, start learning to, to get into the power skating schools during the off season and maybe up through junior hockey, but you know, once a player gets to the major leagues, he should be a good skater. I, I, it's going to be very difficult for him to be a better skater once he gets there. Paul Woods is our example off the Red Wing roster. Woodsy, when did you first learn to skate? Well, I was about five years old when I started playing hockey, you know, was there, Ontario. Any, was there anything you did to uh, improve your skating to get this far? Well, I think the big thing is just skate a lot, you know, play a lot of hockey and uh, yeah, my father, he was uh, big and my brother and I learned how to skate well, you know, so he kept the skating a lot. but. It's just a lot of practice, you know, not only in uh, arenas, but outside, you know, frozen lakes or wherever you get the opportunity to skate, we'd uh, find it. Even though it isn't all that much fun, Nick, why don't you and uh, Paul show us some of the drills the wings go through just for skating? Okay, we go through several, but we can, uh, Paul can run uh, through a few of the skating drills that we do each day in practice. Okay, okay the first uh, skating drill, Larry, that uh, we start to practice is each day. It's a warm-up skating drill, and Paul's going to start with a weave and he'll, he'll just skate up here and uh, you see he'll just weave to the left and weave to the right 
He certainly is an excellent skater. It's an effortless skater, and uh, we'll just do it this a couple of times, and uh, and then uh, he'll do the same thing backwards. Uh, start all over now, Paul. He gets right on the edges of his blades. He does. He? he can really get up there. He's got such great legs and uh, great strength in his stride. He's one of the better skaters in the National Hockey League today. And you want everybody skating backwards too, not just defensemen. Oh, that's for sure. I mean, you have to skate backwards as well as as well as you do forwards. It's very important. And uh, we've noticed that a lot of players get to the major leagues and have trouble skating backwards, and it really hurts them. And you'll even skate your goaltenders too. Well, I think that uh, this, uh, uh, the goaltender has to be one of the better skaters in the team. He should be one of the better skaters. He needs good quickness, good balance, and agility in that net. So. Every skating drill that we do in practice, our goaltenders go along and they do them, and, and they do them willingly because they, they want to improve in that area. Now this is another uh, skating drill that's just, this is good for youngsters. It's, uh, it's just very, very basic, and it's called a circle drill, and of course he gets to improve on his crossovers uh, to the left and to the right, and uh, he'll go around both circles in one zone, and then he'll go out in the neutral zone and, and uh, do the circle drill around that big circle. Good crossover. He's, Boy, he's a smooth skater. Down in the opposite zone, and he'll go around both circles down there. And in each circle, of course, he's going in the opposite direction, and this is where he, he improves on his crossovers. And sometimes in these drills, you'll do them with the puck and sometimes without. Most of these drills, we'll do them, first of all, we'll do them without a puck as a warm-up, and then we'll speed things up, and each player will do the same drills with the puck. And there's one other drill you talked about that uh, is one of Paul's favorites, the 45s. Oh, the 45s, that's the one the players cringe when we say 45s. Usually at the end of practice, uh, this is the one thing we'll do. And uh, let me, I'll just describe it a bit. It's a little uh, too vigorous. Paul's already done six of them today, so we're not going to ask him to do any. But basically at the end of the practice, we'll pull the nets out and our players will skate around, around the nets for 45 seconds and they're going full out. We need 100% effort in this and, and they don't stop skating until uh, 45 seconds as, and the whistle is blown. And um, they'll then they'll change directions, and uh, we'll right now our team early in the season is up to 6:45s, and uh, by mid-season uh, we hope to be up to 10. And we feel that uh, we improve on our speed and stamina. Uh, the idea of the 45s is, uh, although the players hate them, we feel that at the end of a tough game we're going to be strong going into that third period. And especially this year with the overtime rule in, we want to make sure that we're strong going into the overtime. So we we improve the player's strength and stamina by doing 45s. And the players just hope you give them an honest count on the 45 seconds. Oh, believe me, they count. They, 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 they always remind us exactly how many they've done. And uh, they're quite tired when they're done. But, uh, of course, the next day they feel real good and strong. And that's the important thing. Well, thanks, Nick. It's been a pleasure with these little coaching clinics with you all season. That's our final one for this year. But there's still more hot to come and we'll rejoin Bruce and Sid after these messages. This has been Coach's Corner, brought to you by the 35 Tubby Sub Shops. The last place you had a sub this good was here. You know you'll get the job done right. We take pride in what we do. We care about the work we do for you. Trust the Midas Touch. 78 MGB. Trust the Midas Touch. Where nothing but the best is ever gonna do. Thanks. Trust the Midas Touch. There are 47 Midas Muffler shops in the greater Detroit area. Check the white pages for the shop nearest you. We both knew you could. We both knew you could. So many times I knew that you were so much more than good. You and me and Diet Coke. Going one better just for the taste of it. Diet Coke, yeah, Diet Coke. Just for the taste of it. Diet Coke. 
only one day, only tomorrow, only at Waterbed City will you see everything on sale. Only tomorrow. Only tomorrow can you get this finished waterbed complete at $195. Only tomorrow. Only tomorrow is every sheet set, pillow, and comforter on sale. Only tomorrow is every waterbed on sale. Only tomorrow. Only tomorrow will you see bedroom suites by Trend West, Pacific, Singer, and Vaughn Bassett all on sale. Don't miss it. Only one day, only tomorrow at Waterbed City in Dearborn Heights, Sterling Heights, and Birmingham. Only tomorrow. You're looking at America's new pizza pizza generation. Because Little Caesars knows that everybody loves pizza. We give you a lot of pizza to love. We use America's finest meats, cheeses, and flour. So pizza pizza not only tastes great, it's great for you. Little Caesars Pizza Pizza. We give you a lot of pizza to love. Little Caesars, the all-American pizza pizza. This is the bank. Do not watch this commercial. Hi, got to tell you how to make more money on your IRA only from Michigan National. You didn't hear that. Yes, you did. You see, Michigan National compounds interest monthly, so you earn interest on top of interest, and you get a better return for your money. Other banks, like them, don't give you that. Remember, either. you didn't hear any of that. Yes, you did. Michigan National, we give you more money for your money. Werner's, a Detroit tradition that refreshes your thirst, tingles your tongue, and adds sparkle to your life. Because Werner's has that deliciously different taste. That's why we call it the one-of-a-kind soft drink with a one-of-a-kind taste. Well, I hope you're still up and with us uh, in the Detroit area or Michigan area right now. It's a little after midnight, I know. The Detroit Red Wings and the Los Angeles Kings sit have played what I would not call a classic hockey game. It is five to four, and it has not been the type of hockey the Wings have played in the last couple, three games. Oh, it's hard to believe they've been playing such a checking game, Bruce, that they would fall away from it. Four goals scored in the period. The first one by Simmer uh, early in the 201 mark, uh, taking a play that Greg Steffen appeared to have and then lost by Simmer just taking a jab at him. Then they come right back, Bolderev scoring his second goal of the night on an assist from Park, and Bolderev putting the puck actually off Matson's pads up into the top of the net to put Detroit right back in the game. Ruskowski, though, when the Wings were had a man advantage on a giveaway by Detroit, scored a bad goal on Greg Steffen from about 40 feet, 35 feet. The Wings come right back again, though, with Bolderev coming in, picking up a rebound out in front of the net putting the puck in the net, so it's still anybody's hockey game, and it appears as though it's going to be 10-9 to 9 or 8-7. to 7. In the last couple of games, and I'm talking about Calgary and Vancouver, the Red Wings won them both here on the road, something that's almost unheard of when you come out west to win the first two games you play, but they were playing a checking kind of hockey. They were controlling the puck. They were working the corners. They were doing things they are not doing here. They've sort of fallen into the Los Angeles pattern. That's what they're doing. L.A. is dictating the type of game Detroit will play, the Wings are not playing good hockey, Bruce, by any means, so they've got to come out now in the third period and see if they can put things together. I think they'll still win this hockey game, though. Chicago Blackhawks lost to Toronto tonight. That means that the Detroit Red Wings, if they could win this hockey game, move just that much closer to clinching at least third place. We'll be back with that third period. Let's pause right now for this. What does it mean when a Shell dealer displays this sign it means he makes these important promises to give you a written estimate up front to have certified mechanics and the right equipment for the job and he backs his work in writing in a word your shell auto care dealer promises to give you quality car repair service right here in your neighborhood look for this sign shell auto care This is European design from an affordable point of view. The amazing Renault Encore with distinctive European styling, functional yet expressive. A panoramic rear glass door that reveals flexible interior space. Most amazing of all, it's only $57.55. Affordable European design built in America. Renault Encore, amazing. The one to watch, the one to watch, the one to watch. Renault. This Bud's for everyone who scrapes it, sprays it, and lays it on smooth. This Bud's for you, for all you do. The king of beers is coming through. Yeah, just...
just for you. That distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do. This Bud's for you. This is the story of a small boy's faith, a young man's courage, and a dream come true. Beauty's fast. I mean, he's real fast. And I thought that maybe we could train him to race. The horse has been promised, not by me. My father and I raised that horse, and, and now, if possible, I'd like to buy him back. I said stop the carriage. Black Beauty. Monday night on TV 50's 8 o'clock movie. Guests on Red Wing Hockey receive a key tour package to Toronto, staying at the luxurious Sheraton Center. Key tours bring you Las Vegas from $199 and Florida from $139. Seats are limited. Call soon. And a gift from Wickham's of Windsor. Quality men's clothing with distinctive style. Remember, the current exchange rate is honored for American funds. Now back to Bruce and Sid at ringside. So we say hi again here at the Forum uh, in Inglewood, California. The little lady in a red sweater that we're showing on television right now is uh, the daughter of Alex and Teresa Del Vecchio, who makes her home out here with husband Bob, Janice, and uh, Janice. She mentions she comes to quite a few games, too, yeah, when she's out here. And they live, oh, a good hour and a half away from here. Let's check the scoring here in the uh, second period. The scoring open by Simmer, our Shell Auto Care scoring summary. Charlie Simmer scored his 41st of the year from Fox and Nichols at 2.01. Ivan Bolderev got his second of the game, 31st of the year from Brad Park at 2.28. And the two teams played scoreless hockey for the next 10 minutes or 8 minutes. And at 10.25, Ruskowski, a shorthanded goal, his 15th of the year from Hackinson. And then Ivan Bolderev right back down the ice. Aubrey took the shot. Bolderev wrapped in the rebound. Dunlop drew the other assist at 12.32. And the period ends as 5-4 to four for Los Angeles Kings. The Wings in that period had eight shots and goal. Los Angeles had six. That gives Detroit 19. And the Kings 18 after two periods of play. Detroit changing their goaltender. Coming out now with Corrado Mikulov to play this third period. I think it's uh, only fair to point out that Greg Stefan did not have a good uh, couple of periods here. But he has played so very, very well, and he has been one of the major reasons that the Red Wings are in a playoff position, though. 100% right, Bruce, on just the two games that we won, the game in Vancouver and again the game in Calgary. If it had not been for Greg Stefan, we would not have won those games. It was strictly great goaltending that brought the Wings the two victories. Old friend, uh, what's this now? Oh, a minute and six seconds remaining. Greg Stefan takes his spot over on the Detroit bench. Now, a minute six remaining in the penalty to uh, Eddie Johnstone. So the Los Angeles Kings will open this period with the extra man. They do a little work along the ice surface here. We've had a total of ten penalties. They've been five aside. Power play goal and a shorthanded goal for Los Angeles. We got Linda and Bob Quigley from Traverse City are here. They're big wing fans. They're on vacation. Enjoying the weather out here in sunny California. Now Dwight Foster and Bob Mano penalty killers and the Wings win the draw and clear at the length of the ice. In behind his own goal now, Bernie Nichols. Nichols of Los Angeles. The Kings have Simmer up front with Dion and Taylor. Down the ice, Marcel Dion drives it in behind the Detroit goal. It goes into the corner. They dig in after it. Foster ties his man up to the boards till they struggle in the corner. And it's held there long enough for a face-off to the right side of the Detroit goal. And here's a name you know, Bruce. Terry Fletcher wants to say hi to Jim and Emily Fletcher. Uh, Emily's in group sales in Detroit uh, for the Red Wings. Blake Dunlop comes out to take the face-off against Dion now, deep in the Detroit end to the right side of Corrado Mikulov. Dunlop won the draw, and Randy Latticer bats the puck into the corner. Dwight Foster chases after it with Simmer. And Foster trying to hold it there, fell down. Latticer scoops it in behind his own goal, but here's Dion playing it back on the line for Nichols. Nichols hands it off, and a drive wide of the goal. Fired 
by Turney, can right through the goal, rather by Mark Hardy. Came back to the line, Nichols holds it in. Into the corner now, Dion sent it back of the net. Zimmer brought it right to the goal crease, and Mikulip knocked it away. Now Nichols will pick it up. No, oh, it's Dion that actually struggles after it. Being checked there by Larson, the puck loose to Zimmer. Zimmer going right into the goal. There's a drive and score. As Hardy came in, took the pass, and now Latitzer is in a struggle with a Los Angeles player, Taylor, off to the side of the Detroit goal. Randy Latticer, who doesn't get involved in battles, is holding his own very well as they move him oh, behind the goal. Look at how those helmets come off. Nichols just reached over and pushed his helmet back. But this was a, a goal where Los Angeles Kings just actually outfought Detroit for the puck deep in the Red Wing zone. And Charlie Simmer found, wound up in front of the net, made a perfect play across. For still they struggle, Latticer and uh, Taylor. And Latticer still trying to get that left hand free. Taylor doing the same. The two linesmen have them separated now, but this went on for quite a period of time without any real damage done by either of the two. But uh, Red Wings now find themselves down by two goals on that power play goal. Simmer just found himself wide open with the puck. Oh, uh, it was just a case of too much strength in close, and uh, L.A. with the 19th best power play in the league uh, come out here tonight and, and really moved the puck around and scored two power play goals and a shorthanded goal, but they just outmaneuvered, first uh, getting the puck across to Big Simmer, and he is very, very hard to knock off the puck. Finally got it out in front, and there was... Mikulov had fallen, and the puck was put up into the top part of the net. So the Wings trail by two with a lot of time remaining in the third period. Let's pause for this. It could happen again. Head walls icy. Forget about it. Bring out your best. Bring out your best. But was alive. The best has a taste all its own. Enjoy it. But was alive. Number 20, Mark Hardy. Right out in front of the Detroit goal. Hawkinson takes the pass and scores, making it 7 to 4. Well, and the wings are just very, very loose around Toronto Mikulov. They are not checking, and uh, they're just leaving things up to the goaltender. Uh, L.A. just putting pressure on them and taking the puck away from them. Nobody picking up the player out in front of the net. That's Hawkinson. Just Hawkinson taking the pass right across and standing there by himself. There wasn't a Red Wing defenseman within 15 feet of Number 11, Charlie Simmer, and number 16, Marcel. Dion, along with Simmer, drew the assist on the first goal of the period, the power play goal at 102. Los Angeles goal, their seventh goal. Now Hackinson scores. That's his 15th on the season. Assist to number 17, John Paul Kelly. Eight, Kelly and Roskowski draw the assists, and the Red Wings are down now by three. So the Wings are the team you thought would be coming out and playing it very tight in the third period to get something going. But it's been Los Angeles. Here is Ivan Boldarev firing from center ice. Shot rising high off the glass. Played still in the Los Angeles zone. Colin Campbell held it in. Now Ron Duguay sends it back to Boulder up at the line, back to Duguay. His pass didn't come out. It bounces to the center ice area. Duguay has it there. Ron Duguay back over the line, gives it now to Colin Campbell. Campbell put it right to the goal mouth. That's knocked away, grabbed by the defenseman Wells, who falls down on top of it. And that stops the play, keeps the face off in the Los Angeles end. It is 7-4, to the Kings will be back in a moment. to get daddy at the airport it's really rainy we'll be just fine honey with the flick of a switch the american eagle gives you the traction of four-wheel drive because there are times when the most important thing your automobile can give you is confidence comfort luxury and the confidence of four-wheel drive no ordinary wagon gives you that hi daddy hi sweetheart depend on eagle from american motors 
Don't go away. The way things have been going, three goals doesn't mean a whole lot in this hockey game, but the Wings are down by those three. Two quick ones here in the opening moments of the third period. Well, it's getting awful tough now, Bruce. The three goals, uh, the Wings not putting that much in their game. They're not checking tonight. And, uh, but I guess when they left Detroit to come on this road trip to play the three games, uh, if somebody had said that they might win all three, it would have been pretty dark looking, but uh, they won the first two and we're hoping to pick up There's another one. Still tonight. chances, Colin Campbell with a drive and Matson knocks it down. And then Danny Gear took a stick along the face, but stays in the play. Aubrey came back out center ice, tipped it away. Now here's Simmer playing it over on the left side. Aubrey knocked that down. He cleared it too far out in front of Mano. They race in after it, back to touch it is Hardy. And the icing call will bring the play back into the Red Wing zone off to the left of Corrado Mikulov. We have played now just three minutes and two seconds of this. The third period, each team with 20 shots and goal, but the Kings scored two quick ones. Colin Campbell trying to score from through a melee, and Matson make a big, made a big save there. It bounced off his chest. Uh, Danny Gear was being held out in front, or he possibly would have picked up the loose puck. This is so much not like the Red Wings tonight. Uh, they just don't have the, the drive that they've had in previous games. And giving up goals to a club that has had trouble scoring goals too, uh, and trouble winning games, dropping behind now by three here early in the third period. Now here the King Simmer holding it out along the blue line. They put it right on the stick of Mano, and Mano just sweeps it center ice. Playing without Taylor, who's in the penalty box. They have Harris over on the other side of the line with Simmer and Dion. Mano breaks it up. Had to wait for Lambert. Bob Mano. His pass knocked down by Dion. Larson covers up. Reed Larson failed to go through. Here's Bob Mano. Mano over the line into the Los Angeles end. Took the shot. That's deflected into the corner. Obrey fired it to the opposite side. Dion goes in. Larson chasing him. Dion scoops it along the board. Pierre Obrey held it in for Detroit. Obrey a bouncing puck. Off to the side of the Los Angeles goal, dug out of the corner by Simmer. Charlie Simmer sent it to the line, it bounced away from Larson, and here's Dion. Back into the Detroit zone. Marcel Dion put it right to the goal mouth, and Nicola kicked that away. Now Mano heads back down the ice for Detroit. Bob Mano sending it off to the side of the Los Angeles goal. The Kings play it to the side of their own net. Now Los Angeles shoots it to the Detroit blue line. Here's Kelly picking it up. Kelly with a drive. And Mikulov came out, cut the angle, and stopped that. Lambert heads back for Detroit, ahead now to Bolderev. Ivan Bolderev carries over the line. Bolderev trying to go through. Knocked away by Barrett. Then it's picked off by Eisenman. And Bolderev has a score goal as Eisenman set him up perfectly with an empty net. That yeah. one was completely out of the goal. It's just un canny the way Bolderev gets himself in the hole or open spots when he gets in deep and he was standing there with the door. all he had to do was put the puck in the empty side take, taking a perfect pass from Eiserman. Bolderev had fallen he got up on his feet just stood right at the corner of the net the puck come across to him and he scores his fourth goal of the night Steve Eisenman draws the only assist at 4 minutes and 24 seconds. So now it's Bolderev's fourth goal of the hockey game, his 33rd of the season, and the Wings are down by two. 15 minutes and 15 seconds to play, third period. As we said, it is not over yet. Here's Hawkinson in behind the Detroit goal. Hawkinson goes to the corner, brought it right out in front, and Mikulov stopped his backhand drive. And the Wings are allowing them to move around too freely in the Detroit zone. A pileup of players and the puck stays loose. Now here's Chorney. He bounced the puck out in front of the Detroit net. Barrett has no stick, so Mikulov reaches out and holds on to it. It's a little wild. Oh, it's loose, loose hockey, and uh, L.A. coming ever so close to scoring another one. Well, the trivia quiz, who was the only Red Wing to win MVP in the playoffs, and it was Roger Crozier in 1966, despite the loss to Montreal in the Stanley Cup final four games to two. The trivia quiz brought to you by WJR Radio. You remember that one? Yes, very much so. Final goal of that hockey game, never forget it, was the pocket Richard. 
as he skated the puck into the net. Now the Wings trying to get right back into this hockey game. They trail by two. Greg Smith goes in behind his own goal. Smith heads out. Out to center ice. Bounces it into the corner. Lambert digging in after it. So Matson came out of the goal. Cleared it off the glass. Kelly Kitsy holds it in. He was sent to the ice by Wells. And Los Angeles starts back up. Now McKellen hands it off. Here's Nichols back into the Detroit zone. Drives it into the corner. Brad Park tips it up the right side and Lane Lambert has it. Lambert lost it at the line. Brad Park has it. Back to Lambert. Three of the wings moving in three on two. Lambert over the line. Now Lambert drops it back to Kissio driving right in. He scores! And it's seven to six. And I'll tell you, Matson just misplayed that terribly. Well, it was a good play by Lambert, yeah. though. He just put it back to Kissio and nobody picked up Kelly. He just moved right straight in, shot it along the ice. Matson didn't cover the far side of the net at all. He'd come out, but he just left. He put his glove down. He was going to try and make a save with a glove along the ice, and it just went right underneath the glove. But it's funny, the defenseman never picked up Kelly Kissio, and he usually shoots the puck high when he gets in. He just swished it right along the ice, and Matson missed it entirely. Brad Park, who started the play to Lambert, gets the other assist. Kissio's 21st goal of the year. At five minutes and 51 seconds, and the wings right back into a trail now by a goal. And I was I was kidding when I said it may wind up 10 to 9 when I said that before in between the second and third period. Now here's the play off to the side of the Los Angeles goal. The Kings bring it out center ice, seven to six to score. A drop pass. Harris had to go back after it. Mano ties him up, and Detroit moves out with John Barrett. Barrett moves in. Here's Barrett sliding it, going in after it, off to the side of the goal, put it right to the goal mouth. That was knocked away. Held in behind the net. They struggled it along the boards. John Barrett tried to jam it into the side. And that was knocked down. And Dwight Foster slides it into the corner. Centering pass. Obrey couldn't get to it. And it comes back out center ace. Sent back to the Detroit blue line. Knocked back into the red wing end. Up ended with Simmer. Now the wings will shoot it back to the center ice area. I'm checking the bench, Sid. Uh, Danny Gear was shaken up a little bit. He was holding his face. He has not been on the line the last couple of shifts. He is on the Detroit bench. Now they play still in the Detroit end. They're pumping one another. Charlie Simmer going after Colin Campbell now. There's a struggle in the corner. Raskowski, as he usually is, is in the middle of it all. Detroit trying to work it out in their own zone. Simmer and Campbell are down on the ice. The referee watching it all. Still, they kick away deep in the corner. Detroit trying to get it loose, and they do. Coming out to the now Bob Mano. Mano down the right side, over the line. Here's Mano handing it back. Ron Duguay, and a stick sliding out of the hand of Wells. Knocked it away from Duguay. In behind his own goal, that's Mark Hardy playing it up the left side, held in by Duguay with a drive. And Matson stops that. Here's Boulder and sending it back to Greg Smith. His shot knocked down without a glove. It's played to the corner, rather than without a stick. It's played by Wells. Wells is going to kneel on it. They've gloved it from one to another, and so a face-off will stay in the Los Angeles zone. We have 12 minutes and 23 seconds to play in a wild one here at the Forum. We're in the third period. Ron Duguay, who had a couple of opportunities. Ron Duguay has played a pretty strong hockey game for the Red Wings tonight. He has been doing a lot of the bumping, but... That Kelly again, he is really whacking people around. But who would believe they're down by three with the L.A. coming out and scoring two quick goals. But then the Wings come back and answer with two in a matter of a minute, a little minute and a half. And it, they're right back in the hockey game with so, you know, 12 minutes and 23 seconds. We might see another five or six goals. Very quickly, the other scores, all finals this afternoon. Buffalo shut out New Jersey six to nothing and Washington six to nothing over Pittsburgh. Tonight, St. Louis went right into Edmonton and clobbered them seven to one. Chicago at Toronto, the Maple Leafs 7, Chicago 3. Boston defeated Montreal 5-2 in overtime. Hartford at Quebec 3-2. Minnesota New York Islanders played a 4-4 tie. And the New York Rangers lost at Philadelphia. The Flyers beat them 6-5. The Red Wings moving back home to meet the Toronto Maple Leafs in the game. Next Wednesday afternoon, Greg Smith's shot deflected off a Los Angeles stick over the glass up into the crowd. Friday night at 8 o'clock, Jacques Cousteau and the crew of the Calypso are back and ready to take on the mighty Amazon River. Don't miss Jacques Cousteau's journey to a thousand rivers Friday night at 8 o'clock on TV 50. 
Dennis and Karen want to say hi to Bill O'Bear back in the Detroit area. Jim, Diane, and Heather Paglia, Fraser, Michigan, uh, the, the game tonight. Want to say hi to everybody back in yeah. Detroit. Now the play comes back to the Detroit zone. Wings had a lot of players on the ice for a moment. Have things pretty well straightened out. Gare, Foster, and Mano now the forward line of Detroit. White Foster tipped it along the boards, but not out. Back on the line, a drive fired wide of the net by Engblom. Mano takes it off the boards, leads the rush for Detroit. Bob Mano back into the Los Angeles zone, drops it for Gare. Back on the line to Foster. Foster bounced it out in front, and Marcel Dion picks it up and heads back. Here's Dion coming to the Detroit blue line. Dion dropped it right onto the strip of Foster. And White Foster up the right side now to Danny Gare. Gare turns with it, lifted it back into the Los Angeles zone. Took a belt from Journey as he did. Out of the goal, Matson cleared it all the way back to the Detroit blue line. And John Barrett is back after it. Now Barrett fed it ahead. Kelly Kissio struggles to control it at the Detroit line. Up the right wing now to Lane Lambert. Back now to Colin Campbell. Back over the line. Campbell had it knocked away. Taken now by Bernie Nichols. Nichols shot it to the Detroit line, and Barrett hands it there to Campbell. Colin Campbell lifts the puck, bouncing it back into the King zone. It went right to the net, so there's no icing. Lane Lambert trying to hold it in. He's bounced in along the boards, and it's Nichols picking it up, shooting it over on the opposite side. It took a bounce again. It comes out center ice. Reed Larson tries it right back in. Now 10 minutes and 45 seconds to play in the third period. Lane Lambert rolled it in behind the goal. Journey goes in after it. It was held in by Latticer. Latticer played it into the corner. Now Journey played it up the left side, and McClellan sweeps it out to center ice. Nichols. Nichols turns away from Latticer's check. Back into the Detroit zone. Here's Nichols. Got a man wide open out in front. Fox, but the pass never got through to him. McLeish picks it up. Rick McLeish, his pass knocked away. Mikolov drops it off to Randy Latticer. Latticer leaps it up the right side. They hold it in along the boards. Dug away by Kissio. Now tipped ahead, Pierre Aubrey at center ice. Aubrey of Detroit. Pierre Aubrey just slid it over the line into the Los Angeles zone. The Kings will take it there. Coming out now is Hardy. Hardy ahead to Kelly. Larson tied him up, and now Latticer heads back for Detroit. Randy Latticer back over the line, drops it now for Boulder over the drive, the save made, a loose puck in front, and it's taken away and handled by Krista. Penalty to the Red Wing net, or rather the Red Wing player, Aubrey driven into the goal, and a penalty coming up to Los Angeles. Detroit, who have not been that good on the power play, get another opportunity now. And we've, we've mentioned about how well they played in the power play. So we'll be back with that Detroit power play. They trail by a goal. Let's pause for this. Take us out to the ball game. Take us out and you'll see. It's not as tough as it was before. No need for breaking a seat anymore. Because we're made of super soft leather. Try us out and you'll see. Because it's Cooper. Cooper's the name. It's a new ball game. Cooper. Gloves so soft, they're ready to play ball when you are. Here, Aubrey trying to get in position out in front of the net. Uh, was really rammed by Wells. It's very, very lucky he wasn't injured because he was driven right into the goal post. The call to Wells is interference. But the Kings draw position right at center ice, or rather at their own zone, and drive it back to the Detroit blue line. Back after it, Brad Park, Boulder have had it knocked away, but Duguay picks it up. Ron Duguay fell down, and here's Ruskowski heading back and falling down. Eisenman, Ruskowski over the line, and Brad Park knocked it away. And feeds it quickly ahead now to Boulderev. Up the right side to Duguay. Ron Duguay's pass didn't come through. Slides back into the Detroit zone. The Wings now have Eisenman back at a point with Brad Park. Kissio is up front between Boulderev and Duguay. Back down the ice. Eisenman shooting it deep into the Los Angeles zone. Matson stopped it back of the net. And the puck bounced right back to the center ice area. Park knocks it down. Feeds it at his own blue line to Kissio. Or rather to Eisenman to Kissio. And now Brad Park. Here is Park, turning away from one check, feeding it off to Kissio, still at center ace. Kissio played it off to the side of the Los Angeles goal, and it's driven all the way up into the crowd by the Kings, so a face-off gives the opportunity to the Red Wings to get things organized a little bit. Yes. It'll be deep in the Los Angeles end. Their power play has not been very productive tonight. 
Red Wings have only two more regular season home games at the Joe Lewis. They're Wednesday, March 28th, 7.30 against Toronto. And then Saturday, March 31st, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, the Chicago Blackhawks. On Saturday, the first 4,000 youngsters receive a free T-shirt, compliments of the Detroit Free Press. Tickets may be purchased at all the Ticket World outlets. Eight minutes and 48 seconds to go in the third period. One minute in the penalty to Wells. Now Larson is back at a point. Eisenman goes up front, but the Wings lost possession, and it's driven all the way down the ice into the Detroit end. Mikulov hands it off to Larson. Now Bolderev turns it back in his own blue line. Ivan Bolderev sends it back to Larson. Reed Larson still at center ice. Here's Larson heading over the line. Gives it now to Bolderev. Back to Eisenman. Eisenman shot it to the line. And Larson did a good job to hold it in. Still at the blue line to Brad Park. Park gives it now in the circle to Dugay. Dugay tried to set his man up. Eisenman and it was knocked away. Held in again by Larson. Back on the point. Dugay in the circle to Bolderev. Ivan Bolderev back on the line. Brad Park drove it into the corner. And the... Kings going after it, coming out Brian Engblom, streaking up the ice. Here's Engblom shooting it into the Detroit zone. The penalty has just seven seconds remaining as Park is in behind his own net. Brad Park almost lost it, he did. Then it's loose out of Nichols, he took the shot and Nicholas made the save. As Nichols rolled right into the Detroit net. Penalty over, the wings back down the ice. Here's Bolderev moving in. Ivan Bolderev hands it back. Larson cutting right out in front. And Larson tried to jam it in on the side. Knocked it away. The goaltender Matson stayed with it. Reed Larson with a great opportunity. Now the wings struggle to hold it in the Los Angeles zone. Larson deep in the corner. Reed Larson back of the net. Bolderev put it right out in front. The wing hauled down was Lambert and right back down the ice to the Kings. Fox carries into the Detroit zone, drops it off for McClellan. Here's McClellan, the play broken up by Eisenman, and then a driving shot by Fox. Fox, another shot, and they score! And Mikulov is running out of the net. He wants something done. I don't think so, though. That was a pretty good goal by the looks yes, of it. I don't know if he got knocked down in the, just before the goal was put in or not. He is mad about something. But Eiserman made the first save on a, on a shot and then didn't know where the puck was. Oh, yes, Mikulov got knocked down by... Yeah. Well, by he McClellan. had a pretty, good, uh, right, by pretty that, good argument. Right. Before he could get up, the puck was in the net. McClellan just run right over him. Now it's 8-6. to six. So Fox gets the goal, and the Kings now another two-goal lead. But that doesn't mean anything. There's still more than seven minutes to play. Fox is 28th of the season. The Red Wings were coming close on the other end before the Kings came oh. down with really their first opportunity of the period. Reed Larson, I think, should have shot the puck, Bruce, rather than oh, try yeah. to stick Handel in. There was so much traffic out in front of the net. And the way he can shoot a puck, he should have just come in and rifled it. He probably would have scored. He tried to stick handle his way by the goaltender, and there was just too many people there. An icing call, and that makes it a face-off back in the Los Angeles end. We'll be back in a moment. What does it mean when a Shell dealer displays this sign? It means he makes these important promises. To give you a written estimate up front. To have certified mechanics and the right equipment for the job. And he backs his work in writing. In a word, your Shell Auto Care dealer promises to give you quality car repair service right here in your neighborhood. Look for this sign. Shell Auto Care. Los Angeles 8, Detroit 6. Six minutes, 46 seconds to play here in this third period. Now the Kings gain control in their own zone, and Wells lifts the puck high in the air, bounces it out center ice. McLeish had it bounce away, and John Barrett came back to cover up. It's still loose, though, on the Detroit end. Colin Campbell dug it off the boards, laid it up the right side. Wells ran at Lambert. Buck held in at the blue line, this time by Taylor. Here's Charlie Simmer putting it out in front, and that's knocked away by Barrett. The wings sweep it back down the ice. Kissio in a race with... 
Hardy. Hardy gets there first, touches it in the faceoff, comes back into the Detroit end. And I'm sure when this game started, the Wings didn't want to get into a shootout with this hockey club, and uh, they're certainly in one. It's uh, the well, team that gets the most shots going to win the hockey game. Actually, looks like. the shots on goal aren't all that much. 25 no, for uh, Los Angeles and 24 for Detroit. But both teams are so loose in their own zones, uh, they're just uh, allowing bad goals to be scored. Mikulov really having quite a conversation with the referee Myers. And as we watch the replay there, he had a pretty good yes, reason for it. Yes, he did. He got knocked down by McClellan, and uh, before he could regain his feet, the puck was in the net. Now the puck rolls back into the Los Angeles zone. Jorney goes into the corner. Mano checking him, got it loose. Danny Gare left it for Mano. Mano with a drive, knocked down at the side of the goal. They dig into the corner still, kicked away by Jorney of Los Angeles. Running into him, the Red Wings held it in. There's a shot by Brad Park, knocked down, and Dion takes it out in front of his own goal. Up the left side now, here's Harris, back to Dion, broken up by Greg Smith, right at the Detroit line, and the play is offside. Five minutes and 42 seconds remaining to be played here in the third period, 8-6 to six, Los Angeles. And Katie and Mike Kendrell want to say hi to their family back in Detroit. They're very avid Red Wing fans. Face-off will take place in the center ice area. Ivan Boulderev with four goals in the hockey game. We have a reminder to our Red Wing season ticket holders again. You have until next Thursday at 6 o'clock in the evening to pick up your playoff tickets. Season ticket holders may also purchase an additional ticket for each season ticket you hold. A little more about that in a moment or two. Right now, we're back to the play. Here's Mark Hardy driving it back into the Detroit zone. Mikulov comes out of the goal. Played it ahead now to Eisenman, and Steve Eisenman heads back for Detroit. Eisenman out at center ice, over the line, trying to go through, and he's hauled to the ice by Mark Hardy that time. Molderev laid it out in front, and Eisenman just now digging away. Played in behind the Los Angeles net to Kings Kelly. Flipped it to the line, it comes out center ice. Greg Smith covered up there, but the puck went back in offside. Oh, well, we're talking about the season tickets, the playoff tickets. The season ticket holders may also purchase an additional ticket for each season ticket you hold, and all the remaining tickets then will go on sale to the general public next Friday, March 30th at 10 o'clock in the morning. Playoff tickets will be sold only at the Joe Louis Arena. You must purchase the three-game series, and there is a limit of tickets per person. Monreal stopped by, wants to say hi to his family in Utica, Michigan. We have people from all over the state here tonight. Eight to six, Los Angeles leads Detroit, a face-off just over the Los Angeles blue line. Kelly Kissio as Lambert and McLeish on the wings, Brad Park and Greg Smith back along the defense. Now the Kings play it ahead to Nichols. He was slowed up by Park, and Mikulov came out of the goal, hands it in behind his net to Greg Smith. It bounced away, and it's Brad Park. He fired it off the boards at center ice. It'll be taken by Fred Barrett, John Barrett's older brother. Puck cleared back into the Detroit end. Brad Park racing after it with McClellan. Park drove McClellan in along the boards. They struggled there. Puck ended up behind the Detroit net, and Greg Smith has it. Now Smith. He played it too far out in front. Kissio made a good play to hold on to it, then shot it too far out in front of Rick McLeish. They dig in after it, it's behind the Los Angeles goal, but they've whistled it down for icing. And a play back into the Detroit end. And with a score 8-6 to six for Los Angeles, we pause for this message. The 1984 Olympics. These could be your tickets to the summer games. Enter the Budweiser and Bud Light Olympic sweepstakes. Five grand prize winners, each receive an all-expense-paid trip for two to the Olympics, plus over 5,000 other prizes. Tickets and details in TV Guide, Sports Illustrated, Sport Magazine, or displays of participating Budweiser and Bud Light retailers. Grab a six-pack and write down the winning numbers. You could win a trip to the 84 Olympics. After this hockey game, the Red Wings will have just three games remaining on their schedule. The Chicago Blackhawks will have four. And Detroit will hold if they cannot get a couple of goals here to get back into this one. Still a five-point lead over the Hawks in the battle for fourth place. Toronto Maple Leafs have moved now within three points of Chicago. 
They're making a bid to get into the playoffs. Now here's Blake Dunlop coming out center ice, dropping it off for Rick McLeish. McLeish just lifts it back into the Los Angeles zone. The Wings go for a quick player change as Eisenman, Doogie, and Boulder have come back out. And the puck lifted back into the Detroit end, and Larson has to hurry back after it. Charlie Simmer chasing him. Played into the corner for Boulderev. Boulderev wrapped it off the boards. Duguay has it on the right side. Duguay ahead to Eisenman center ice. Steve Eisenman carries back over the line. Went around Barrett. Took it right out in front. And Vladiser cutting right in was stopped by Matson. And the puck slides back into the Detroit zone. Eisenman made a big play, and Vladiser did everything he was supposed to. It just didn't go. Now knocked down center ice by Larson. Larson's pass knocked down in the Los Angeles end. Ends up back in the net. 3.35 to play, third period. Kelly got it to the line. Larson stopped it, drove a shot. Matson stopped that. Bolderev tipped it along the board, but Ruskowski's in after it. Swings it up the right wing. Too far for Hackinson. Mikulov came out of the net. There's it center ice for Duguay. Ahead now to Eisenman. Steve Eisenman got it over the line. That's as far as that went. Now it's Los Angeles clearing it to the Detroit line and Latticer. A left wing pass to Boulder Ev ahead to Eisenman. Steve Eisenman trying to go through and Jay Wells stopped him and Wells didn't get it out. Boulder Ev held it in here. Eisenman going right in. He scores! On the play from Boulder Ev and now it's 8-7. to seven. Don't tell me that we will have possible overtime now with a 8-7 to seven score with still three minutes and three seconds to go. Steve Eisenman not making a mistake, getting trapped in deep taking the pass from Boulderev, and there was no one near him, and he put it right through Matson's legs. Boulderev making the play right out at the blue line, getting it across to Eiserman. His 38th goal of the season. Steve Eiserman's 38th goal of the season. Boulderev sets him up. The wings are down by one with three minutes to play. Buck goes right back into the Los Angeles zone. Kelly Kissio held it in. They dig in along the boards. Lane Lambert gets into the struggle. It's held in a face-off to the left side of the Los Angeles goal. Eiserman from Boulder Ave at 16.57. Pause in the action. We'll be back in a moment. You're looking at America's new Pizza Pizza generation. Because Little Caesars knows that everybody loves pizza. We give you a lot of pizza to love. We use America's finest meats, cheeses, and flour. So Pizza Pizza not only tastes great, it's great for you. Little Caesars Pizza Pizza. We give you a lot of pizza to love. Little Caesars, the all-American Pizza Pizza. Let's take five seconds for station identification. This is WKBD TV 50 Detroit. Now the Kings back over the line. Drake Smith deflects the shot of Nichols into the corner, but Nichols dug it out back of the net. Now Brad Park will take it away and go in behind his own goal. The Wings have two and a half minutes remaining in the third period. They trail by a goal. Smith out at center ice, drops it back to Park. Up the right side, Lane Lambert chases it into the corner. They bump one another, he and Fred Barrett, and they're going to whistle it down for icing, bring the play back into the Detroit zone. Boy, this was a questionable call. Uh, the pass was just off the end of Lambert's stick, and they raced for it. The Red Wings have 29 shots now to... The 25 for the Kings. Another social note, Jim and nephew Mike want to say hi to Jerry Barron of the Detroit Police hockey team back in Detroit. Now Detroit have two minutes and 19 seconds remaining in this third period. Braskowski comes on with Harris, Hackinson, up front for Los Angeles, the wings do gay, Dunlop to take the face off and pull the road. In behind his own goal, Brad Park flips it into the corner, and Greg Smith leads it ahead to Dunlop, coming out center ace. Dunlop was knocked down, and Ruskowski shoots it right back into the Detroit zone. Greg Smith tipped it ahead. Now the Wings will bring it out with Dunlop. Blake Dunlop drives it deep into the Los Angeles end, then heads to the bench, and Eisenman comes on, but the Kings have possession. It's driven all the way back into the Detroit end, and this is what Detroit wants. It'll be an icing call as Smith is back to touch it. And a minute and 48 seconds remain now. Still lots of time for goals, Bruce, the way they've been going in. 15 goals scored here tonight. 
Ivan Boulder have having quite a night with four goals, and he set up the last ones with four goals and an assist for Ivan. Heiserman has a goal and two assists. Kissy on Lambert have uh, played well. Right. Or in the statistical department. Larson and Lattice are back along the defense with Duguay, Boulder, Evan Eisenman up front now. Boulder up will take the face off. If he can win the draw, it'll be Reed Larson who's right there to pull the trigger. This is very similar to a play the Red Wings scored one second into a power play opportunity against Calgary. Puck came right back to Larson and he didn't get a hold of it. And it was the same play. Yes, it was. And he had the opportunity and just bounced away from him. Now Randy Latticer feeds it back to Larson, back in the Detroit zone, ahead to Eisenman. Eisenman kicks it ahead and goes after it, scoops it into the corner. Hardy goes in with Boulder out. The two of them in along the boards. Buck loose by Duguay, then Duguay was knocked away from it. Boulder up trying to hold it in, but the Kings pick it up, shoot it all the way down the ice, and it's played now by Mikulov, and Mikulov sends it up the right side to Larson. Reed Larson's pass knocked down. Larson goes after it a second time. Tries the left side with Boulderev. A minute seven left. Here's Boulderev bringing it out center ice, and Mikulov is going to the bench for the extra attacker. So the Red Wings have an empty net. Here's Reed Larson. Larson minute, played it off minute, the side of the goal. They struggle into the corner. Eisenman trying to get it loose. Still that puck held to the boards. Referee letting them play it. Duguay put it right out in front. Went right through Boulderev. Eddie Johnstone with a shot knocked down. And it's... Dion with it. Dion played it to the line. Latticer held it in. A puck right out in front of the net by Johnstone, but a nifty Detroit goal. And the puck is fired back into the Detroit end. 35 seconds to go. Ron Duguay plays it ahead to Boulder. He lost it. And they score. Cutting in was Bill Harris. Ivan Boulder just inside the blue line. Or was it? No, oh, it was Reed it was Larson. Larson. I'm sorry. The puck bounced off his stick, and Reed was going the wrong direction and bounced off his stick. And he fell at the same time, and they've got the empty net goal, so this game now is history, but the Wings had their chances to tie it up. Saw the mustache and named the wrong man. I'm sorry about that, Ivan Boulderev. It's hard to believe that the Wings could score seven goals and not win because they have been checking so well on this trip, but if this was just being a shootout, a wide-open affair. Now the Wings have their goaltender back in. They trail by two, nine to seven, 20 seconds to go. Puck held loose. Here's Lambert trying to get it out in front, but it's taken in behind the Kings goal. Fired up the left side. McClellan trying to pull away from Park, couldn't do it. Greg Smith has it, 10 seconds in the period and in the hockey game. Lambert plays it ahead to Kissio. Kelly Kissio's pass didn't get through. Lane Lambert drives a shot from center ice. That's grabbed off by Matson, who then kicks the puck up into the crowd. But the Red Wings stayed right in it till the last moment or two, and then when they lost just inside the old blue line and the puck taken by Harris, an empty net goal to make it a 9-7 to seven final score. Well, I'll very quickly tell you the shots and goal were 30 for the Detroit Red Wings and 26 for Los Angeles. That gives Detroit a total of 11 in that last period. The Los Angeles Kings would have a total of 8 in the final period. Mikula played the third period. The Red Wings uh, fell behind 3 to nothing in goals by McClellan, Taylor, and Dion, a power play in the first period. Then came back with two of their own, Ivan Boulder, Evan Lane Lambert, and it was 3 to 2 under the first period. Zimmer made it 4 goal from Park at 228, 4-3. Then Ruskowski, a shorthanded goal as the Wings just gave it away deep in their own end while they had the extra man, 5-3 Los Angeles. Boulder have got it back, 12-33, uh, with, or rather 12-32 with his hat trick, 32nd goal. 4-5, Los Angeles led into the second period. Then Hardy, a power play goal in the early moments of the third period, made it 6-4. Then Hackinson skated right in, made it 7-4 with his 15th goal of the year. Boulderev scored his fourth goal at 33rd of the year. That made it now a score of 7-5. Kissio made it 7-6. And then Fox made it 8-6. Eisenman came back 8-7 with three minutes to play in the game. And then the empty net goal by Harris, 19-29, makes the final score 9-7 to for the Los Angeles Kings. So the Red Wings return home now. They've won two of three here on the West Strip. They'll be meeting the Toronto Maple Leafs at the Joe Louis Arena. Our broadcast time Wednesday night will be 725 on radio.
That's the story of this one. As this is Bruce Martin speaking for Sid Abel, our produ producer, director, uh, Toby Cunningham. We are here in Inglewood, California, the forum, the home of the Los Angeles Kings, who tonight defeated the Detroit Red Wings with once more the final score, Los Angeles 9, Detroit 7. Red Wing Hockey. Tonight's game's been brought to you by Bud Light. The best has a taste all its own. A clean, distinctive taste is what you'll find in Bud Light. And by your 47 Greater Detroit Area Midas Shops. Trust the Midas Touch. And by the Detroit Area J.C. Penney Stores. Your headquarters for kangaroo shoes. And by Little Caesars, the one that gives you two. Get twice the slices at any of the 150 Little Caesars locations in the Detroit metropolitan area. And by Michigan National Corporation Banks, where we give you more money for your money. And by Thorn Apple Valley's great-tasting hot dogs, hams, bacon, and sausage. And by Renault, the one to watch for Europe.